Okay, I do believe we are live. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Break the Rules stream. We are here. We are queer. We are talking about mental wait health. Second. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, yeah, queer with culture, the, academic term. With uh, okay, so uh, I am Love Poliakov at Love Po on Twitter. For all those who uh, know, I'm sure all of you guys already know. We got uh, Giovanni Penichetti with Too the crazy sweet. background in the house, and we have Max Derrett and Paul Town joining us. I believe we are going to have Average Centrist joining us a little bit later. But today we're talking about mental health. Uh, we are talking specifically about uh, autism and uh, schizophrenia. And I think this is one of those things online where it almost seems like people adopt these things without even knowing what they are, kind of like these identities. I mean, we could even talk about, like, uh, Autistic Mercury, for example, uh, which uh, you, uh, I know you're, 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 you're familiar with. You had to let me that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no, but that is, that is an example where we have people here today who actually know Amazing. what exactly... <laughs> What, what exactly this is like, and I think that a lot I of the internet is very clueless when it well, comes well, to what, what exactly, yeah, what we'll exactly this is. So I want to get into it, and I know, Max, you cannot stay uh, a as long today, uh, mm. so I would love to uh, start with you. Uh, okay. Please tell people uh, about yourself as well. For those who don't know, Max is a, a brilliant uh, creator, YouTuber, whatever you want to call it. You analyze all of these uh, various, uh, various psychological aspects of uh, video games games and uh you uh recently had me do the sonic the hedgehog esoteric secrets of sonic the hedgehog i'm gonna post a link to that as well on your channel and uh i was uh, really uh, happy about doing that but anyway max uh go on tell us a little bit about yourself okay well first of all if you want to feel like if you want a good video to watch to make you feel like you have autism, go and watch Lev's video. And I say Bro, that. Bro, you stole my joke. I, was say I say that. that. I say that. Listen, I don't say that in an insulting way. I say that in the, the most positive experience. way because it's like your brain. When he's talking about all the stuff that's going on in Sonic, it's like your brain is going a million miles a minute, and it hurts, but it hurts so good. Yeah, so, I would say also if you want to understand what schizophrenia feels like too, watch that video too. <laughs> it's, it's, the ment it's the mental illness, uh, sissy hypnosis. Yeah, yeah you can watch it. You can watch it on my channel. Just go to Max Derrett. Uh, you can see my name on stream right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I so just posted the link to it as well, right over here in the chat. Right on. Thanks, man. And thanks again for uh, putting that video up while I was on vacation. Uh, so in regards to autism, it's, as you just pointed out, it is something that people don't tend to understand. They just tend to use it as an insult. Uh, so if you happen to be one of those people watching that right now, go ahead. It doesn't bother me. Just uh, get all the mm -hmm. jokes out in the chat right now. Yeah. See, um, I don't even know if it's about insults as much as also kind of like propping some people up as if... The they're members of some uh, hidden group. You know what I mean? Like it's oh, an mean, endearing term. You mean That's... 4chan? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Kind of like uh, almost being seen as like us with superpowers, like autistic superpowers, things like that. You know, like that. I see it more as that as an insult, at least within these uh, circles of the internet. Yeah, I like it when people say weaponized autism. That makes me feel like I actually do have a superpower. And it, it is something that actually exists. It's pretty much what I just do on my channel on a regular basis. But autism, for people that don't really know what it is, it's often confused with mental illness, which is actually a completely different thing. I'm sure if you've you know, had any experience with mental illness, either directly or you have a family member or friend that has it, you'll hear them uh, say that, oh, I have a chemical imbalance. And those chemical imbalances can be corrected uh, either by medication or cognitive behavioral therapy or other types of non-medical interventions. Whereas with autism, it doesn't have anything to do with a chemical imbalance. It has to do with the way that your brain is wired prior to your birth. So uh, contrary to what uh, some anti-vaxxers might believe, uh, it's not possible for you to take a vaccine and then have that vaccine rewire your brain so that you have autism. No, it's, a, it's, a, it's the way that, it's just the way that your brain is structured when you were born and what the way that it's uh, wired differently compared to the average brain uh it's best to understand it like this on the one hand you have a side of your brain that tends to deal with uh social capabilities and your ability to interact with other members of your species and then you have the other side of your brain which is the more analytical logical pattern recognizing type unlike the average brain where these are more or less balanced 
and the autistic brain, it tends to be very heavily focused on the latter. It happens to focus on pattern recognition, uh, the stuff that tends to be picked up if um, you yeah, happen to have a high IQ, whereas all the stuff that's um, uh, social, it it's not always the case. Like there can be some hypersocial autistic people, but they're in the minority. And uh, I happen to be one of those people. I'm not a, the most social person. I, I had to learn uh, over a long period of my life how to be social so that I can advocate for people that are autistic. And um, but yeah, it's th that's sort of a general uh, it, if you wanted a general understanding of what mm. autism is, that's the best explanation I can give. I can go into more detail, of course. Mm. Well, before you go into more detail, I wanted to also introduce Paul Town. For those who do not know Paul Town, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, it's like Philip Daniel on YouTube says, I look like a figure out of the Weimar Republic. <laughs> what is that? Um, what, do you mean like one of those cab ca cabaret singers? Yeah, you know, like, like cabaret like, with Liza like Minnelli? A, yeah, like a, those disease, like a diseased person. Um, <laughs> oh, no, no, you don't look like a diseased person. No, it's your lips. It's the fact that your lips are darker in the webcam that makes you look like, you remember, like, they I'm were saying, like, cabaret, cabaret, cab you, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, all that jazz. Yes, um, exactly. There we go. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, like, a diseased, sick person. Uh, no, uh, I'm, um, I don't know the best way to describe it. I'm just, like, a, a person. I do, like, writing, um... I do other stuff. I do some creative stuff, programming, that sort of thing. Um, I also, I have had a schizophrenic episode, psychotic episode, psychotic break, however you want to put it. Um, so in the context of this stream, um, I'm going to be telling you guys about schizophrenic delusions and um, things, you know, that, you know, that are crazy, crazy person. <laughs> And how, I love how he, yeah. like, the way his eyes looked when he said that. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell you guys all crazy. about crazy. Go, go and buy Paul Town's books. I have all of them. Most of where, them. Where can we um, buy? Is it book.paultown? Uh, Is that where you go? Yeah, you just go to author.paultown. It'll redirect you to Amazon, the Amazon page stuff. Excellent linking that as well Ugh. so but before we get back to max paul just tell us real quickly what is the definition of schizophrenia like what do people get wrong about uh about it uh well schizophrenia is like i've noticed recently it, it's 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 the same sort of thing with autism where it's like a cool thing it's like a oh i'm schizophrenic i watch alex jones i'm schizophrenic it's like now you're just <laughs> watching alex jones um but it, it's it's similar it's it, it's it's kind of it's a it's a sensory processing thing similar to autism where, and it depends on the person. So like usually your brain, like everyone's brain filters out a ton of information nonstop uh, just or, cause like, if you didn't, you would go crazy. Um, so basically that's like, you know, if you're reading something, if you're looking at signs, if you're uh, listening to music, if you're uh, talking with people, that sort of thing, if you're writing, um, looking at a picture, like your brain is just like by default filtering out like a constant amount of sound and uh, visual stuff and information because otherwise your brain's just gonna like you're just gonna go crazy because you're gonna have so much like uh, information basically constantly coming at you um and like for example like this is the sound of like electricity in the walls uh, i know autistic people have that sometimes mm. they can hear autistic they can hear uh, literally hear the electricity in walls like mm. the buzz of electricity that sort max, of max uh, do you uh do you happen to have that particular uh thing or no uh, with, the, with the what? With like extra sensory hearing, like hearing certain, like picking certain sounds up that uh, people usually kind of like filter. Oh out. yeah, oh yeah, that's another aspect of autism that people tend to frequently have. It's a higher sensitivity to uh, sensory perception. It could be anything having to do with the five senses, and particularly sound. Like, uh, for example, my family just recently got a new dog. Won't shut the hell up. And every time she barks a few times in my ears, I come like this close to a meltdown. It's not good. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I know that when I meditate, for example, one thing that sometimes happens is I start hearing almost like somebody doing like I don't know what exactly what exactly that is. Whether that's just 
<laughs> whether, the demons, yeah. whether there's something yeah. going on in my ear or whether just like let's say people who take uh psychedelics for instance um they talk about hearing certain sound like certain frequencies that may be there but other people just don't pick them up like i don't know if people have done research as far as is it just a matter of hearing sounds that otherwise people would pick up if they focus or are certain things just completely closed off to people who don't necess who don't have this extra sensory ability? And for you, uh, Max and uh, Paul, that part is open up. Like, is this something where you could kind of say, like, yeah, it is kind of like a power of some sort, for lack of a better word? I think it's both. I think it's it's safe to say it's both because on the one hand, it could be something that you're born with, and you could have that capability and not have any sort of mental illness or autism. Um, and, you know, you could be like a really great musician. You're able to pick up on the patterns and music and be able to uh, have a keener ear for certain tones and you have an average brain. But uh, on the other hand, it could be something that's gifted to you because of uh, autism. And uh, we also got Average Centrist on board. Welcome, Average Centrist. Great to see you again. So, uh, Max, when it comes to um, growing up, how did your family um, adjust to uh, the particular things that you had? And mm. uh, in general, what is life like for people who, let's say, their kids may be autistic and uh, people who, let's say, have friends who are autistic? What are some things that you would recommend people kind of watch for and uh what are some things that people end up getting wrong in terms of having relationships together with people who have autism? Ooh, okay. That's a lot of questions. Um, let's see how I can break this down. Well, the first thing they asked me was how it worked out uh, with my family growing up. Well, the thing is it didn't. My family, uh, I say this in my first video that I ever put out on my channel in regards to autism, it's probably the one that I'm most famous for. It's called the truth about Asperger's syndrome, eye contact. And in that video, I explain how growing up and sort of the negative symptoms that come along with having autism. Unfortunately, they're very easy to pass off as just normal misbehavior by, uh, by, you know, neurotypicals is what we call them. And neurotypicals, they mean average people. So when I was growing up, whenever I misbehaved, uh, I, it was just treated as that they, my family didn't really have any inkling that there was anything in particular that was quote unquote wrong with me. And I understand why it's because uh, going back to the whole sensitivity thing, um, whenever I was disciplined for acting at a turn, whether it was because of something related to my autism or, you know, I was just being an asshole kid when my father and my mother would discipline me, it struck like the fear of God into me. And so I did everything that I can to be hyper aware of making sure that, oh, don't do anything out of turn. Otherwise, you'll have to deal with that again. And it's not like they were particularly violent with me or anything. It's just like maybe they yelled too loud or maybe they pulled on my arm to get me to stop doing whatever I was doing. Or maybe they were particularly condescending when I had a, a, an emotional meltdown or something. But yeah, at, growing up, because of uh, those initial uh, experiences, I just did everything that I can to contain everything. And over the course of just over a decade, like leading up into my later teen years, um, all that energy is just sort of started to build up within me. And then it got to a point where I could no longer contain it. And then it just poured forward in, in a huge emotional outburst, which I go into greater detail with on my channel. Um, and unfortunately, I just to address quickly another thing that you said, uh, what I've seen from talking to other people that have autism is that our lives share frightening congruity in terms of the way that we grew up, certain particular events that happened that define the course of our life. And uh, what I just told you about having to keep it all to ourselves and not anger anybody uh, is quite common. Um, I forgot some of the other stuff, but I imagine... You know, well, other the other stuff has to do with uh, how would... Uh parents go about with autistic children or oh, yes. somebody goes into a relationship with somebody who's autistic what are certain let's say do's and don'ts oh okay well the first thing that you have to realize is that it's really really not that big of a deal all anybody really has to do for the majority of people that have autism is just make one or two very simple accommodations you know if 
if somebody has autism, more often than not, they're just going to ask you, hey, um, is it okay if uh, you just maybe speak like 20% uh, lower, not as loud? Is it okay if I sort of speak to you without looking you in the eye? That's another big thing, a uh, big symptom among people who have autism. Uh, and then as long as you're willing to make those simple accommodations, you'll find that, uh, or like accommodations like that, you'll find that people who have autism are perfectly lovely people to be around and aren't as weird as the internet might make them out to me. And in regards to parents, the most important thing like the, that could sort of point to whether or not your child has autism is sort of see how they react to different stimuli and compare how your child acts to how other children act to similar stimuli. stimuli. Are they prone to uh, frequent negative emotion? Do they have a lot of uh, what look like tantrums, even though they aren't actually tantrums? Uh, do they not look you in the face when they talk to you? Uh, do they struggle socially at school? Stuff like that. Those are the big triggers. Mm. And if yeah, yeah, if also, you know, not to like just sort of shill for my work, but it, if you just want a general understanding of what autism is uh, without having to do too much work, uh, you can just watch my videos, like my aforementioned series, The Truth About Asperger's Syndrome. That will give you a pretty decent idea of what to look out for if you're particularly concerned and you'll be fine. I want to bring this to uh, Gio and Paul and the uh, average centrist as far as asking you questions, because, again, you, I know you have to leave around 530. But before that, I wanted to ask specifically about the Simpsons avatar. For some <laughs> reason, every time that I see it, uh, and I know we kind of covered it before, but not specifically about like why the Simpsons, but just the kind of face that you're making in the avatar just like this friendly looking face there's just something very fun about it i don't know like uh do, do you see what i'm talking about here there's like a particular energy with that and also i mean people associate you know back to sonic uh for instance people associate sonic together at least in terms of internet memes they associate sonic with autism and mm -hmm. sonic has like this bright cheery face is there some connection going on here between like let's say brighter colors and this kind of uh, very um, very very earnest cheerfulness that well, these characters display I, I I hate to burst your bubble dude but no that's not intentional if you want I can give you the quick story as to how this avatar came to be it's not particularly interesting but it's something that I get asked a lot sure yeah okay so back in 2007 some of you might recall that the Simpsons movie came out right um at the time as a sort of promotional website for the movie uh 20th century fox put up a website called simpsonize me and, oh shit yeah i remember that <laughs> yeah <laughs> and what it allowed you to do was upload a picture of your actual face uh to the website and they tried to create a simpsons character based off of that picture that looked most like you and that was the picture that came out uh 14 years ago and then when i decided to do youtube uh five or six years ago i thought to myself oh, I, I like my privacy i don't really want to put my face out there online maybe i should do what a whole bunch of other uh youtubers seem to be doing right now which is using cartoon avatars in place of uh their actual face and i was just like huh do i have something like that oh yeah i have this and then mm. the jokes just sort of grew from there it's really not that <laughs> special a story. Mm. Uh, but then you also have the uh, banner that uh, was uh, made for you where it's like a much darker, grimmer, like in this <laughs> grimy mirror, you looking at yourself. Why mm. Why is it that it's you say stay yellow, which I know you said that a friend of yours, a comedian, uh, got that from uh, stay black. Uh, or uh, yes, but stay black. I think the first person who said stay black, I could be wrong. I think it was Joey Diaz, who was recently mm. in that new Sopranos prequel. He all, he uh, ended his podcast saying and stay black because that's the most important thing. So I don't know if that's uh, if that's the connection right there. But oh. can you exp yeah. Okay. That may be it. I don't know. That just that that's at least my theory. But uh, can you explain why the grim look over here on the uh, on the thumb on the uh, banner? Oh, well, it's, it's really rather simple. It's it's a, it's the opening scene to Silent Hill 2. Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I just, <clears throat> I happen to, Silent Hill 2 happens to be one of my all-time favorite games. And also, out of any character in the history of video games, I happen to think, and a lot of other people happen to think, that I look like the main character from that game, James Sunderland. 
And so uh, also because the number one thing that I'm most well known for covering on my channel is those games, the Silent Hill games. I figured, huh, why not uh, get my artist, my personal artist, Eliza? She does all the thumbnails and art for my channel. I asked, hey, can you uh, do a version of this where it's my Simpsons character instead so I could put it on my banner? And she said, yeah, sure. And there you go. Yeah, yeah I kind of really see the cool. resemblance right there. And does Eliza have a Twitter or anywhere where we could follow her work? Oh, yeah, totally. I can bring it up right now so I can uh, put it in the chat. Uh, sure, sure. Put it in the chat. While you're doing that, though, uh, Geo, Paul, Avercentris, do you guys have any questions for Max? Because I know I, Max has to go. I've, yes. got, I've got a big question. It's for both Paul and Max. But sure. how is how is dating been <laughs> like with this stuff? Because oh, I've got it to be a minefield. <laughs> oh, um... For me, I have like a criminal record, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's kind of easy. Um, yeah, so. he's going on dating on tutorial mode when you have a criminal record. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like a violent felony is very easy. Uh, get women to like you. <laughs> you don't have to, you realize it doesn't matter. Like, you can like just say the worst things ever, and like you can like actually be schizophrenic and talk about like the voices in your head and stuff. And they'll just think it's like women love attractive. men that could kill them at any time. Yeah, the, the more <laughs> mentally you are, like, like scary wise, like yeah. if you're possessed by demons, the easier it is mm. to get women. Yeah. Max, a uh, similar uh, situation with the uh, with the dating. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Look, because uh, well, what's you've all heard the phrase, you know, ninety percent of human communication is body language it's nonverbal, right uh when you're autistic that you're firmly left out of that sort of unconscious game that men and women play with each other and so trying to find uh, anybody that will be able to look past that in my life has been uh extremely difficult um i will say though um what i found to be the case among people who have autism is that because we tend to be more honest and we don't tend to play that game that the average man and woman play with each other, we tend to be godsends to particular types of people that are just like, look, I just want to be with somebody who's nice and who's honest and who's kind and is willing to work hard at the relationship. And because of that, even though it might take us longer to find someone who will give us the time of day, once we find that person, it's a very positive, healthy relationship. And so you might have to wait longer, but the trade-off is better. And in my particular life, I've been in two relationships and uh, I'm the last one that I was in, it ended very positively. And the one that I'm in now, it's one of the best things that's ever happened to me. So you know, normally people who have autism, they hear about all the negativity when it comes to dating and their um, their uh, prospects. But I like to give people that semblance of hope because it's it's tangible hope that you can hold on to. It's worked out for me. It's worked out for a lot of people I've talked to. Yeah, and I, I bet it's uh, is it is it with that sort of thing? Is it like it's it's ro it's rocky in this at the start, but like once you get over the initial rockiness, it's much better because it's like there's a base of honesty that most people don't have um i would say that when it comes to the positive relationships i've had there's never been any rockiness okay. it's only when um you talk to certain people that are predisposed to just being averse to anything they don't understand uh that that rockiness is going to be there no matter what and okay. i've had that i've had that but uh you know you tend to forget about those people they're not worth your time Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, have you uh, found a community of people who share uh, certain uh, qualities that you find within yourself from doing uh, all these amazing videos you do? Oh, God. I, my, I, I don't I say this without hyperbole or exaggeration. My community is the best community on the Internet, on YouTube. You know, YouTube com comment sections in particular can be famous for their... Uh, overflowing cancer my youtube uh, i can't talk my youtube comment <laughs> sections are almost always full of people who are intelligent and kind and are just there willing to talk about big ideas seeking for enlightenment 
and looking for genuine help for their mental health afflictions. And I'm so lucky. Yeah. I've uh, I've noticed that too in the comments section of the uh, Sonic the Hedgehog video I did. <laughs> there's a lot of uh, there's a, there's a lot of great commentary there. But uh, when it comes to kind of like going into the future as far as solving, uh, let's say, certain uh, neurological uh, problems, you did a video recently where you talked about how if you had the choice, you would choose to remain autistic. Can you talk a little bit about that? Right. Well, the, the video you're referencing was where I was talking about whether or not I would take a cure for autism if one were to be developed, even though I highly doubt it could be developed unless you have the ability to rewire a brain, which uh, I don't know, maybe we'll see augmentation like we see in Ghost in the Shell sometime in the next few decades, but I I'm doubtful. But let let's say that a cure could be uh, developed. I said that I wouldn't take one because the fact of the matter is when it comes to your positive traits and negative traits even though sometimes you would you wish especially if you have autism you wish those things could just go away because of the immense pain that it causes you you might lose some sense of yourself of who you truly are if those things were to just disappear um i, I can give a good example um for when before i got diagnosed with autism uh, I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder and I was treated as if I had a mental illness rather than if I had uh, autism. And I took my first ever uh, drug was called Ciprolex. And what happened when I took that was I did feel like I lost those parts of myself that were inherent to my being. I lost my ability to uh, empathize. I lost my ability to laugh. I lost my ability to, um, I, I was just, constantly in this continuous fog and, and it was existentially terrifying. And even though that drug was supposed to help me, and I imagine if a cure were to be developed for autism, it would be a lot like that, right? It, it, you would lose, even if it's a negative thing, uh, or maybe not necessarily negative. It could just be something that some people like and some people don't. Are you sure mm -hmm. you want to give up that part of yourself? I, I'm not sure I would. Interesting. I want to ask this to Paul Town as well, but before that, since it's already uh, 5.34, uh, I don't I want got, to... I got yeah. a few more minutes. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, then, uh, while, while you're while you're here, uh, Gio, do you have any questions that you want to ask Max? And you're also wearing yellow, by the way, which is... Uh, it's like yellow and red. It's like oh, a yeah, mus sure. mustard, mustard and ketchup style. Gio is the yellowest of the yellow. <laughs> the yellowest. <laughs> um, I think it's funny how uh, autism... Like there, there, we were talking before about how the internet sort of has taken up the stereotype of it and um, sort of reified it as part of like internet discourse. But I think it's interesting how both autism and schizophrenia are two conditions that a more like serious analysis of our current um, zeitgeist, you would say that like they're the two conditions you would almost need to navigate a world such as ours which i find interesting <laughs> yeah. but I, like i wonder like if autism i remember reading these articles about the uh i think like some journalists called them like autism farms in silicon valley where they like do your laundry and you live in a pod and you code all day but i wonder if autism in some ways is kind of like the condition from which um you can sort of cope with the way things are nowadays i don't know especially like in the information age like i remember like i remember people were memeing on those varge tweets about autism being the next stage in an evolution for the uh, aryan uh, nordic man but i don't know like that's kind of you know hmm. well i will say that the way that the world is going it, it it is becoming a safer place and a more welcoming place for people with autism uh, not just in regards to what you were saying, but just in general. Mm. Um, but overall, I'd still say that there's a lot more work that needs to be done. I'd still say that the vast majority of people don't tend to be as welcoming, especially when it comes to employment for people with autism. Uh, one statistic that you, you'll hear very often if you uh, research autism and the lives of people with autism is that 80% of us are uh, either unemployed or underemployed. And for the longest time, 
that was me. Uh, I actually just happened to be above the threshold in that 20% where I would say that I am fully employed because I'm fortunate enough to be able to make a lot of money from, well, not a lot of money, but enough money to mm. pay my bills and stuff from, from YouTube. But unfortunately, the vast majority of us, uh, we are either unemployed or underemployed because a lot of our emotional needs aren't really catered to. And a lot of jobs, entry-level jobs, aren't particularly friendly to those with autistic dispositions. They tend to be places like retail where you're interacting with a lot of mm. people, which is uh, antithetical to our uh, socially awkward disposition. And also, um, you know, loud noises, you work in factories, metal, uh, metal clanking and stuff like that. I'm just yeah. going over some of the stuff that I... Well, all, all the know. stuff you're talking about right now, it seems like, and this could be just a... Uh... Uh, whatever you want to call it, just an assumption. But it seems like robots can take over the retail stuff. I'm not saying this is great, <laughs> but I'm just saying in general, robots can take that over. And as far as uh, any kind of uh, services having to do with uh, office work, that could be done through the internet. Why have this situation where there's like an office, cubicles, or even worse, like a uh, open office where you have to hear the annoying, uh, you know, banter of people that you otherwise wouldn't want to be part of your village? Mm. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, it almost seems like the way the internet's going, that people who are standouts when it comes to doing certain things that others can, people who specialize like you do in being able to perceive certain things that others cannot, there may be, again, like if we're talking about uh, these kind of extra sensory perceptions, there may be work that is currently not being done or is not utilized just because nobody's thought of, hey, like there are people out there that could do all these amazing things. Or like this person who was able to draw completely from his memory the skyline of uh, Manhattan when he was uh, flying in the plane, you know, looking down. Like that is an example of something that is quite uh, tremendous. Yeah. And I'm not saying that everything fits in that category, but in general, like uh, there may be certain things that just are underused like are there any let's say i mean this is gonna be kind of weird are there any forums places where people would kind of li write like i have this very unique ability to do a b and c how could this be of use to anybody you know like is there anything of that sort right now um th there uh, well first of all my discord server uh but in terms of um employment there are certain organizations that are trying to help people uh, get employed specifically people who have autism like one that i've partnered up with in the past uh, when i used to do this podcast on my channel called the differently wired show is a uh, one that specifically hires people who are on the autism spectrum and are particularly skilled when it comes to the stem fields they're called uh, Auticon. uh no not like Auticon from metal gear it's spelled <laughs> a-u-t-i-c-o-n so if you happen yeah. to be a coder or work with software, those people want to talk to you yeah. and they want to give you jobs. So that's a but good man, example. That is a coincidence, though, isn't it? If we're talking about, uh, you know, synchronicity, Otacon and Otacon, mm. you know, yeah. I know I, I kind of believe that uh, plays a role. I wonder if the actual like Otacon from Metal Gear Solid is autistic. He wasn't particularly fond of people. But uh, there we go. Know. See, that's that. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So, uh, Max, any final words before you have to go uh, to the people who are watching this? Uh, like, I don't know, words of wisdom from how, how old are if you? How old are you? If you don't mind me asking, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, <what? laughs> Do you have any words of wisdom? How old are you? Yeah. Where did that come from? <laughs> What's your age or sex? And Wait, am I, are, are you about to be ages against me? Just because I'm, uh, you know, I'm a certain age, that doesn't mean I should have anything. No, but why'd you ask? Why do you ask? I, I'm, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just uh, curious as far. <laughs> okay. No, I, I, no, I think old do people are very wise. People? Actually, what I, what I'm curious about here is I do find that uh, it's kind of a mix. Like there are younger people out there who know quite a lot, and older people who also know. I know. I guess it's just a tr I'm trying to pin mm, down what your okay. generation, what your generation is, because right. each generation I think comes with its uh, particular. Uh, I guess 37, things. 37 years old. You think I'm 37? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, you know what? I understand, Lev. Um, and because <laughs> I've actually had people when I have mentioned my age in the past, people have sort of like, really? You sound so much older. I'm actually 28. 28. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. that's probably what wow. I would guess. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. my second guess, actually. 
<laughs> I, I was going to say like 31 or something like that. But yeah, 28, I, I could kind of see that. Yeah. So, yeah. So any any words of wisdom of the uh, wise 28-year-old Max Derrett that you would want to impart upon I'm the people young. who are watching this, uh, this stream? Uh, well, um, let me think. So the most important thing that you have to realize about people with autism is that we're really not that different from anybody else. There's some things that might seem off-putting because we don't necessarily go along uh, and we can't go along with a uh, normal social convention, but just because we can't do that, that doesn't mean that we're fundamentally broken. In fact, the vast majority of people that I've encountered that have autism, they're absolutely remarkable in at least one particular area of expertise. Like uh, some of my moderators um, that I talk to on a regular basis, one's really like an absolute virtuoso when it comes to history. I know a lot of programmers. I know a lot of wonderful artists just having interacted with them. And if you can sort of look past those superficialities, you can really develop positive friendships and relationships with people that will change your life for the better. And I've been in the fortunate position where because I'm a semi-public figure online, I've had a lot of these people come to me and I've been able to interact with them. And even if, you know, I have a disproportionate number of people interacting with me, uh, you could still have uh, positive relationships with just a few of these types of people. And I swear to God, it will change your life for the better as they certainly have done that for me. Um, well and there also, is, yeah. uh, subscribe to my channel so you can avoid a uh, lonely death in the darkness. Here, here <laughs> is the uh, here is the link to the channel, Max Derrett. Uh, it's a wonderful channel. I highly recommend everybody watching uh, all the videos. I got to watch the new Lane video, which uh, recently came out. I saw Lane this year, so I'm very excited about watching uh, watching that. What other videos do you have uh, cooking? In the works. Yeah. Uh, later this week, expect something on The Matrix. Oh, nice. Uh, because, uh, nice. you know, we got the new Matrix movie coming out uh, in December. And I also, because it's October, I'm going to be having a lot of horror related videos uh, also on games. Uh, there might be, uh, I might be covering a certain game called Outlast. Well, uh, oh, that's a fun game. Yeah, yeah. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, but I don't want to give too much else away. Got a lot of videos planned, but I, yeah, want to keep stuff a surprise. I'm very excited. You've covered uh, Pathologic 2. You've covered, uh, let's see, uh, Final Fantasy uh, Final Fantasy 9, which mm. is a very uh, beautiful looking uh, video game, oh, like so especially for, for, you know, for that time. And uh, you've covered Neon Genesis Evangelion, also mm -hmm. talking about the uh, Kabbalistic Tree of Life, as I made the connection to that in uh, yes, the uh, Sonic the Hedgehog video. <laughs> we really got to get this to Sega, by the way. If anybody who knows Sega employees is watching the stream right now, all right, give me a holler at uh, Levpo, L-E-V-P-O on Twitter. Follow mm. me on Twitter, by the way, and uh, let me know, because I really want to bring this out to Sega. Very curious if any of their employees mm -hmm. Has ever made those similar Sonic the Hedgehog connections? And uh, lastly, c before you go, can you send us uh, your uh, Discord server? Sure, I sure. I would love to become a part of that as well and uh, uh, meet a lot of very interesting people. And by the way, the fact that your fandom is better than the BTR fandom means BTR fandom. You guys have to step the fuck up, okay? <laughs> <laughs> there is <laughs> some of the comments today are wild. <laughs> yes yes exactly so uh so anyways guys please follow max on twitter at uh max derrett d-e-r-r-a-t and uh hey you pronounced my name right thank you there, you're welcome well no our more, fandoms, no more, our fandoms no more prove that you can have friends online yeah so there you go you cannot there are no such thing as a friend on the no well that's it's it's really the only thing on the internet is competition there are puppets and pawns. <laughs> <laughs> it's the British in, in American yeah. intelligence agency. It's called the Rand Corporation. Yeah, it's called the Rand Corporation. <laughs> Next Thanks. hour will be the drama stream. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. Well, uh, thank you Max, it was thank nice, you it was nice meeting you. Yeah, yeah it's nice, nice meeting you me guys, too. Take care. Take you care, too. buddy. Bye-bye. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, yes, Sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah, I did put a link to my Discord oh. in the live chat, so. Thank you. I'm going to uh, open that up right now.
uh, let's see, live chat, live chat, live chat. Uh, for some reason, I'm not seeing anything inside the live chat. Hmm, that's a little bit weird. But, uh, oh, in the Discord. Wait, uh, where did you put that link, Max? Here, I'll just put it in there again. Uh, okay, here we go. Let's it's, see. Because right I, I think you may have sent this to uh, not to everyone. But uh, anyway, guys, also don't forget to subscribe to uh, Break the Rules, BreakTheRules.tv. We are currently simultaneously streaming this. There we go. We are currently simultaneously streaming this on DLive, on uh, Twitch. Surprisingly, we are still on Twitch. And, of uh. course, we are streaming this on YouTube. We are also on Apple Podcasts. We are on Spotify. We are on all the audio things. So here is the invite to Max Derrick's server. Check it out. I'm going to join it right now. There we go. I clicked join, and I am in there. There. so anyway guys once again subscribe subscribe keep subscribing patreon.com slash break the rules by the way geo there is going to be an event coming up uh on thursday which is a very exciting one you know the one i'm talking about right mm -hmm. can you can you tell the uh the good people uh, a little bit about this stick sex and hammer versus joel mm -hmm. davis mm -hmm. about um liberalism and authoritarianism and it's gonna be uh another blood sports i predict that's no i think, I think they're gonna going be to... i think they're gonna be nothing but gentlemen i think it's gonna be a gentlemanly hopefully, discussion hopefully. and uh here is the uh, twitter link to that by the way i'm gonna send the youtube link as well uh be sure to uh be sure to set a reminder this is 7 a.m eastern time by the way and also, do you guys see this dragon on the screen over here? You see that dragon? Yeah. So this is a dragon that uh, my father created. And uh, this one is going to be sent to uh, Sticks himself. But $50 patrons who become patrons of uh, the uh, BTR Discord are going to get this beautiful-ass dragon uh, if they are $50 patrons for six months at the minimum, okay? They're going to get this dragon, and $20 tier are going to get, like, a smaller, simpler version of this dragon. But this is for all the Sticks fans who are watching the stream right now. Patreon.com slash Break the Rules is where you go. Become a patron, and you are not going to regret it. I wanted to make an early shilling for the Patreon today, so there we go. So anyway, Paul Town, back to you. If there Finally. was a cure, yeah. if there was a cure for mm -hmm. schizophrenia, would you take it? Um, I don't. Uh, it's it, it's kind of stereotypical. But I don't. Uh, the the condition I have, I don't think it's really. I think it's more indicative of uh, society as a whole than than. I think it's it's. Um, I don't know. I feel like I wouldn't have this this mental condition if I did if I like sold out and I like went along to get along like i feel like the only reason i have like a, a quote-unquote mental condition is because i uh kind of never compromised on stuff so i kind of was able Maybe. to see see things that other people can't see um can we can we get sense. into that a little bit when you say yep. see things that other people can't see are we talking about things in the spiritual realm the astral um, what exactly are we talking about here well first off i'm on probation so i have to um <laughs> I don't see anything. Lately. I don't see anything. Uh, <laughs> no, um, I mean more in uh, in terms of like with with this specifically. I would mean uh, more like logic related stuff and and stuff with like, vibes and uh, mm. uh, integrity of people and that sort of thing. Um, if you compromise, uh, especially with you're doing like creative stuff, or if you're compromised, I think you you end up in a in a position where your your brain like because you basically choose to sell out or whatever your brain pretty much it works in a different way it starts processing things differently to allow you to feel good about yourself even though you kind of like sold your soul um whereas if you don't do that then your brain's gonna be more honestly processing stuff because you're not hiding things from yourself um mm -hmm. and i think uh i also think i do i've always had a predisposition to schizophrenic type traits mm. which is oh, kind oh of... wait by the way paul can you speak to the mic because i notice sometimes oh. you move a little bit so uh <clears throat> yes yeah, whatever yeah no. no problem um i would say the uh the uh, schizophrenia is weird it, it's 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 a weird type of thing because it's um there's some biological reasoning for it, but it's like, like you love, like you do, you do like meditation and you even talked about it with like the, the Sonic video, which is funny to say, but uh, 
like there are certain things like you've experienced that like you know like if you tried to put into words if you were like in front of a therapist therapist be like all right buddy we're gonna get you on some medication (laughs) we're gonna we're gonna um, you know what i mean i don't know is is sonic in the room right now (laughs) i don't know just yeah yeah Honestly, though, that part of it seems to be pretty simple, at least for me, as far as just, you know, seeing the white light and then seeing like every time I see a flower or like a tree outside now, I just associate, you know, like like that power of growth. It's like, yeah. yeah, this makes total sense. Like, of course, I would have this thing in the center of my vision create various shapes out of it. It's just like this is like an inherent part of humanity. I don't know. Is that something that's crazy to most people? Because like when I say it, just like totally makes sense to me. It would probably make sense to some Indian guru or whatever. Like, yeah, it would make know. sense to Indian guru. But if you were talking to like a therapist about like the Kundalini spirit and, <laughs> and the, uh, <laughs> you know, the <laughs> astral projection and that sort of stuff. Yeah, um, I haven't experienced that yet. I have yeah. not experienced astral projection as of yet. That's what, that's the schizophrenics get like a buff a buff in that. You know, we don't even need to do <laughs> meditation. We can just. You know. um, but yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I would say there with with like this. What what is the original question? I kind of lost. lost well, track. the original question, I, it's not as important. It's just like same thing we were asking to uh, Max. If there was a way to let's say uh, cure oh, get rid of or it. at least yeah or, yeah or at least mitigate the uh aspects of it that you find to be unfavorable would that be something that you would go for probably not and it's, it's not the same reason as max said his for me it's more like i don't know i feel like i'm, I'm here and I, you know, both positive and negative stuff to my you know, gifts or, or punishment depending on how you put it um are like a portion to me for various reasons and I just have to do my best with them. And, you know, it's, it's not like my, um, because to be honest, it's like, I'm much more perspe- uh, perceptive about certain things than most people. Um, and I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really want to give that up in order to mm. not have like days where I feel like I'm going crazy or like uh, running through like a crazy amount of like, uh, like simulations in my head of different things. Um, because I mean, th- there's a downside to it where it's like, sometimes it's very overwhelming where it's a, uh, I'll just be taking in a bunch of information and uh, it's similar to I think the, the autism thing where you're, where you're taking in a bunch of uh, data that other people are kind of like filtering out naturally and mm-hmm. it gives you an upper hand in certain things, but it also can be debilitating. Um, can like, you give an uh, example of this? Yeah. So I'll give you an example. So for like, uh, this is just, this is like just, just a negative example, but like with like movies or music or media, that sort of thing, like, like I'll notice a lot of stuff, um, there is like especially with writing and that sort of thing. Like, I can like pick up on like like like, the, like I can kind of pick up on the intention behind certain things. I think more than most people, and that's beneficial to some things. Like if you're analyzing stuff, you're trying to figure, follow along with the story or something, or listening to music, it's, you can get really into it. Um, but at the same time, it's very overwhelming. It's like you can't, you can never really just like relax and be like, all right, I'm gonna like, conk out and we'll watch a movie. It's like you're watching a movie and all of a sudden you're like, wait a second, like. What is really it's like the same thing with the analyzing sonic and seeing all the you know connections between sonic and occult stuff where you're like wait a second like is this like a message there like that's being sent through sonic you know but it's, it's like that it's like that but for yeah. everything for for music for mm. uh, so, so is it is it almost is it almost a little bit like if we were to take the point of view that every single thing that you are experiencing in this reality is there for you to perceive it in a particular way where it almost is like fate that all of these different things that I'm currently getting now, if I pay attention to them a little bit deeper, hey, like I could dig this rabbit hole ever so deeper and find yeah. out that the song has some meaning inside that only I can understand at this point and it's meant for me to be deciphered or... Would yeah, I would right say, it? for me at least, what it's become is... Um, it's almost like there's like different voices that are not like people, like different voices behind different creative projects. And they're kind of making a point and um, they're expressing itself through different creative, different creatives. Mm. And, uh, mm. and you can, you can see this very clearly with like music, like music is like super people, though the musicians will be super bold about what they're doing because they're, it's like poetry plus music and you can kind of get away with whatever you want um but yeah it's it's like it's like you said it's like basically 
there's uh like a there's like the surface level which is like the imagery which is like in the case of sonic which is you know you have a hedgehog you have rings you have you know running around that sort of thing and you have dr eggman or whatever his name is um yeah and but, dr Ro- robot yeah, dr robot yeah. yeah but it, it's uh and i think geo would appreciate this it's like uh the difference between like the, the signs and symbols which are kind of they're phenomenological to things yeah. underlying them and that's for me at least that that's the case with really all media at this point and uh even like uh, like i can see like uh, archetypes and and uh underlying things and it's very beneficial for like i can kind of tell like where things are going like i'll be watching a movie and like all right this is gonna happen and this is gonna happen this is gonna happen and i can kind of get a sec like a sixth sense for it um mm. but it's also it's it's it can be overwhelming because at a certain sometimes you just want to listen to music sometimes you just want to watch a movie and not be thinking about you know the future of the world or yeah. uh, the future of your relationships or, or that sort of thing. Um, Do you also notice that there is a difference as far as whether it's uh, one country or uh, one culture versus a different culture in terms of the media that they put out, where you would kind of like not say that everything from, let's say, I don't know, Japan, for instance, is going to be similar. Obviously, there are many differences, but yeah. could there be certain unifying things that could tell you a b- deeper story? Yeah. That has yeah, like, to do with like their like, ancestors and so forth so forth yeah you would you can definitely tell there's like a different different regions of the world have like different voices kind of uh and that may it makes sense you don't even need to go the weird woo type like spiritual thing for it. you can just say oh like obviously you know somebody in japan is going to have a different outlook than somebody in the middle east because they're going to have different uh you know ec- economies they're going to have different lifestyles that sort of thing so you don't even need to get into the schizo sort of thing for that but there is you can definitely like not yet taste isn't the right word for it but you can definitely like sense like a, a different vibe at least like, you mm. know that's the Tumblr well approved, even like, even so. color wise like i find that there are certain color designs in japanese photography where there isn't that much of a focus on very saturated color there's a lot more brown used but yeah. at the same time the sa- the uh, more saturated colors end up standing out that much more and you could kind of see it if you ever look at the old uh, sentai shows you know the uh, what is called power rangers in the united states was referred to as zhu ranger in uh, in japan and when i took take a look at the screenshots from that just uh, how the colors are arranged it's like this is just like really high quality. But then when I compare that to, let's say, the newer uh, Zords or whatever they're called in Japan that are coming out, I mean, it's still Japanese, but it's like it's been oversaturated right now into this like toxic color. And so I kind of wonder where are these influences coming from where it almost seems like the old guard of Japanese design is dying out and the people who are replacing them, they're not making things ex- like, it's almost like they're getting infected a bit yeah. by other media in a way. Yeah, that's and a good way to, theirs. that's a good way to, uh, I, w- I would say that's like the big, um, and this is like a schizo sort of thing. Like perspective for me is like the internet is big for infecting, like basically you, you mimetic get, viruses yeah mimetic viruses but it's more like people like who are under the influence of various you know forces and, and things get Your they're words. basically plugged in they were used to be geogra- geographically like you know you know there's here's this schizophrenic in, in japan in some town in japan and, you know they're they're stuck around those people like they're only going to infect the, the worldview of those people whereas now you know the schizophrenic you know has internet access and they're in a community and they can push whatever their ideology or whatever their their worldview is and, and that's the yeah. same thing with creatives where you can you know uh it's like basically the the things that are inspiring the creatives now have been like clicked into this like psychic mesh which is going back to what i was spamming the last uh yeah break the rules um but yeah it, it's it's i get what you mean yeah it's like it's like the the niche like soul is of certain things is being just destroyed at this in point. Japan they call it a furabu which is like in zen is like the crazy wanderer mm-hmm. it's like you know covered in rags and going from town to town but now the furabu is like the default of like the internet shit poster slash cult leader I mean mm-hmm. we all like me you we've all like especially me and you I think we've been subject to like so many different like internet cults of personality and, yeah. and 
they they sort of spread their like contagion and they their mental illness yeah they're ill exactly like their the delusions spirits, of grandeur. The spirits possessing them yeah, yeah exactly like to the point where you know like just turning on people and sending capos out <laughs> them and, and uh yeah. you know you're not good anymore because like you're bad yeah. optics bro because you yeah. posted a sun or red I'm totally not subtweeting someone recently. <laughs> um, yeah, you need to, this, yeah, you need to relax. Mike. I know, yeah. I'm, I know, I know. I've insulted at least three e celebs today, so that's, you, need to um, do, you need to be on like, a roll. Like, you need to move in the shadows. <laughs> yeah, I to, know. My, oh, my, my schizo ESP allows me to to drift in and out of communities without. Mm. Yeah, without, without being in too. Drama. Yeah, I think that's that's like um, the I think like schizo, like like if you read um. Like, like, I know it's cliche. You read, like, capitalism, schizophrenia. Like, you, you have a sort of way out of life being, like, totally, like, not just commodified, but, like, weird brain poison psyop. Because when you when you have that sort of schizoaffective character, and, like, this is, I think, the point that more Guattari was getting at. Like, mm-hmm. if you read, like, for example, Chaosmosis, which is, like, I don't recommend anyone reading it, like, off the bat. What is it? A, it's called Chaosmosis. It was the book that uh, Felix Guattari wrote on his own, okay. along with the three ecologies. Is that but like that book is like chaos magic stuff? It's like almost like reading it is kind of like a chaos magic thing. Yeah. It's like I wouldn't recommend it to people. Yeah, it's not a good thing if if you don't, unless you want yeah. the schizophrenic experience personally. Don't exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like I think that's what they were getting at in terms of being able to like have an unfiltered, um, an unbiased flow of ideational content that comes at you in your different senses. But what I, and I think like, that's largely what people who have managed to like survive on the internet, they've managed to disassociate, not just so they disassociate their real selves, yeah, dissociate. But, but in sort of like embrace um, this like weird character of like, I guess, what do they call it in Taoism? Not quitting, not sticking. Like it's, hmm. You're sort of flowing in and out of things. Yeah, I and... become in, in in terms of Taoism, I become the yeah. useless tree in the middle of the field. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The well, uncarved you... block. That's probably <laughs> well, a good pa- metaphor. Well, Paul, your avatar is uh at least on Instagram, Shadow the Hedgehog. But uh, I do find that most people are kind of surfing on particular waves where there was a period, Gio, you remember very well, I think around 2011 or so, where there were a lot of these uh, accounts that had the uh, Milady Fedora tippers uh, as their avatar. And Mm. then there was, I mean, now, you know, people have like the greek statues in their avatars that's very mm-hmm. common there's this whole energy going on with uh, the historical about... figures as well yeah yeah a lot of people do that kind of thing yeah, yeah. sorry mm-hmm. i didn't mean to cut you off no no yeah, no that's no, that's, that's exactly the point i mean actually average centrist i'm curious what your thoughts are on the uh, current uh, paradigms that are going on online where we have let's say people who are I love that graph, the political compass, where it has like all the Trump supporting conservative posters, their avatars, it's just like people with the sunglasses, like the guys wearing the uh, sunglasses yeah. <laughs> showing the Reddit, their faces. The Reddit thing. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. So uh, what are your thoughts in general about what's going on right now with the oh, uh, bubbles that people are currently in? I'm gonna go full conspiracy mode. And I just think like, um, like for social media and stuff, I think it's kind of like inducing some level of schizophrenia like i think we just touched on it just then as well but i think it's like inducing some level of autism slash schizophrenia oh yeah like because i I, I can't tell whether it's inducing or it's just bringing it to the foreground like it was always there or something but like it it just uh, it's even happened to me like you know when i get more when i've been more terminally online in the past than i am today (laughs) like uh i've had like times where like i'm feeling like i'm having like a real social break from other people i'm finding it difficult to like understand where they're coming from and like to be charitable to be people and stuff like that and like i've had to kind of relearn that a little bit because like i felt like i was kind of losing it a little bit um and i don't know i just feel like maybe a lot of people are going through that um i don't know i don't know what your thought i kind of wanted to ask you paul about that really i wanted to know if yeah you i think about. um there's a there's a term for uh schizophrenia which is called prodromal schizophrenia and it's pretty much um, schizophrenia, but before it manifests like in psychosis. And it, it's pretty much like 
um because like, i've had like one schizophrenic episode where it was like really bad like psychotic and and like because it was like my first one um i wasn't aware of it and i wasn't like looking for the signs so like i if i was i might have been able to stop it and be like all right i need to get sleep i need to eat healthy i need to just not right. do any media um that sort of thing mm-hmm. um but yeah no that that's where most people seem to be mentally uh right now especially after being locked in the house for like a year and a year and yeah. a half is like the prodromal like which is like it's there like the psychosis is there it's just not obvious yet like stage of like psychosis of like just insane being insane yeah yeah and yeah and it definitely does seem to be like um just based on this just the degree of like social media use and like like the internet is kind of like a pandora's box where it's like whatever your neurosis is whether it's like social oh, yeah. whether it's biological whether it's like immigration Paraphilic. taxes uh, authoritarianism communism nazism whatever whatever like group that you're worried about or whatever like fear or paranoia you have whether it's you know even it could be like sexual partners or like or health or plastics in the water or whatever if you mm-hmm. give into that you can find terabytes and like days and weeks worth of information to just completely obsess over that specifically mm-hmm. and th- yeah. suddenly think yeah the world's about to end. i think I think like that's what the global uh, Backstreet Boys World Tour has been about, like people just sitting under lockdown and like researching endlessly about shit that mm. is like minute details that they're probably like half lying about anyways. Like, I mean, before I had my uh, back, my Chinese delicacy, um, I I did that too. Like it, it was really like strange just to have... Um, even like even like a nihilist like CRN said this like when a culture obsesses about life itself, then you play into like these weird forms of neuroticism. Yeah. That you you end up like going down these rabbit holes. And now that the internet has sort of enabled people to go down certain rabbit holes and just lo- like lose themselves. Just every rabbit hole in the world. Yeah. Any exactly. rabbit hole you can yeah. think of. <laughs> I wanted to read this passage actually from uh, a book that I read. A, a while ago called the divided self by Artie Lang. Now that we're on this like anti-psychiatry bent and that uh, him and like Thomas Saz uh, talked about this, but this is a quote from his other book that I found years ago called um, the politics of experience and the birds of paradise. And he um, was, I think he was trained as a clinical psychiatrist, but then he like dumped it and he like started reading about shamanism and uh, a lot of like where Terrence McKenna talks about shamanism is basically just Artie Lang. So this quote um, says, quote, what we call normal is a product of repression, denial, splitting, projection, interjection, and other forms of destructive action on experience. It is radically estranged from the structure of being. The more one sees this, the more senseless it is to continue with the generalized descriptions of supposedly specifically schizoid, schizophrenic, hysterical mechanisms. These are forms of alienation that are relatively strange to to statistically normal forms of alienation. The normality alienated, the normally alienated person by reason of the fact that he has more or less like everyone else is taken to be sane. Other forms of alienation that are out of step with the prevailing state of alienation are those that are labeled by the formal majority as bad or mad or maladaptive. So I, I wonder, like, that's, it's kind of a cliche, you know, like, what's the Krishnamurti quote? It's no, it's no sign of mental health to be, like, well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. Yeah, mm. but it's also yeah. not a sign of mental health to be, like, insane. Uh, yeah, well. Insane it's- society. <laughs> <laughs> there is no uh, mental health. Left. Lev, are you there, by the way? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm there. For some reason, my camera is not turning on. But oh, I'm going shit. To fi- I'm, no, it's okay. I'm going to figure out a way to... Uh, put my camera in through uh alternative means but uh there is a one thing that i also wanted to ask regarding this when i uh used to take tai chi back in the day there was this uh there was this black dude who was uh the first person who i met not even when i took the class itself but when i came into the building and thought that there was going to be a class there was not so i ended up going with this dude sorry to a uh, japanese restaurant and we ate some japanese food and we talked and he told me how when he grew up and he attended those, uh, you know, the, like the Baptist church, you know, like with the, uh, you know, where they sing and stuff, uh, mm. <laughs> his, uh, his pastor used to say that he was possessed by the devil. 
The pastor is possessed, or he? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> that would be well, that would be a great idea. Yeah, the the pastor's by the devil. It's a yeah. interesting marketing strategy for a pastor. Yeah, no, that would be such a. <laughs> that, yeah, that would be such. You can learn about Christianity, and I know that, it goes all that's the <laughs> No, no, we are definitely going to get in that. That would actually be a great hit TV or internet series about mm-hmm. like a like a black pastor who actually communicates with the devil and yeah. keeps that as a secret <laughs> from his con. A lot of them have. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but anyway, uh, but anyway, uh, and he told me that he's got schizophrenia. Yeah. Later on, I find out that this dude uh, took out his Tai Chi sword. So for those who don't know, in Tai Chi, they use swords uh, like the um, in the practice, you know, like teaches you balance and stuff. And uh, he took out his Tai Chi sword and he started attacking people on the subway and he ended oh. up getting arrested. And later on, when he tried to go back to the Tai Chi class, and he was wearing, like, the full thing, like, the uh, that uh, fabric, I don't remember, is it silk, is it whatever, it's just, like, this nice shiny fabric for those Tai Chi uniforms. Like, he was wearing the full getup, he went there, and the master, who was, like, 95 years old, like, he's this, like, old Chinese dude who grew up in Shanghai, he was like, no, I'm. this is it, I'm refusing no more, because he's probably had a lot of experience. <laughs> yeah, well, he's had a lot of experience dealing with this dude who, unfortunately, like the Tai Chi, which was supposed to help him, it did not end up helping him. It's made him more deadly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so when it I comes should take to Tai Chi. Uh... And just... <laughs> oh, man. So, so when oh, it comes God. to this, uh, you know, this going into attack mode, how common is this for people who uh, have a schizophrenic uh, episodes? Is you this like a mad? Me. Yeah, you can trust me with a gun, a knife, <laughs> a sword, <laughs> um, well, flamethrower. Well, actually, since we're talking about that, people have been asking if if you can say. Obviously, if there's like a legal thing that you cannot <clears> say, <throat> I totally respect that. But people were asking why you got arrested. No. <laughs> no, I um, I legit had like a psychotic break back in 2017 or 2018. I forget the year. Uh, it looked like a year, and a um, an orphanage filled with children ended up being burnt down. Hundreds of children. Died. <laughs> uh, no, it was just I, one. Sorry, no one wanted them anyways. Yeah, but they didn't have any parents, and nobody wanted them. So is it an issue? No, um, <laughs> that was like Mo when he played he played the st- Smelly on the Little Rascals. They're like he he um he like beat the original Curly to death, yeah. and they're like ah he was an orphan owned by the studio. They're like oh yeah that makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> no to be honest though I had a I had a I had a psychotic break schizophrenic episode and a an abandoned barn um, ended up being burnt down. Um, so uh, this was this was back in 2018. So. Um, but it was a big, it was a good wake up call. I'm happy nobody got hurt. No, there's no, yeah. uh, no horses, no, no horses, horses no. no angry Tony Soprano coming at you. Like with, uh, I got, I got it to that part, by the way, Gio and the Sopranos. But That's yeah, all. no, it's, yeah. it's, uh, yeah, no, it's a serious thing, but it's also, it's like kind of a funny thing because it's like, it's funny to me that like nobody got hurt and that there's no it was like it was like it ended in a good way um so it's funny to me that you know people treat it as uh anyway it is it, a was, it was a it was a real barn burner you'd say yeah it was a barn burner of a story uh, <laughs> oh god um, you know, oh my god but it's you know it was, a, it was a good learning experience it was um mm. you know and it forced me to really take my my health my habits and my self is very serious because like, prior to that it was like it felt like almost like there was like no consequences for anything it wasn't like i was doing this on purpose to oh well, i'll get away with it. it was more of a it almost it almost felt like i was like floating through and this has caused caused kind of like a disassociative aspect to the to the episode it was it was very bizarre time in my life where i was like watching like things going on i was like does like anything matter does like is there is there any like weight to any actions and that wasn't the motivation for this this wasn't like uh trying to improve a point it was literally i had gone insane i had like a psychotic break um but it, it was it was kind of nice to get a kind of solid like the world being like slapping me back into reality i mean like oh there are consequences for actions um which means also there are consequences for bad things but there are also there's rewards for good things and there's there's a reason to actually try and that sort of thing um so you yeah, know it was an interesting uh it's definitely 
that's that, that part of my my story or whatever i when people ask about it, i try to give information about it because i think it's a good thing um for people to see that you can have like a legit mental breakdown like a legit psychotic episode and go crazy and then if you're careful if you take if you take yourself take your health seriously and you have people around you that actually care you can uh, recover from and actually have some decent standard of living um and i think it's it's an important thing uh in my story like i joke around a lot or whatever but it's important for me to make sure when people they mess like because like most people mess up in some way but very few people mess up to the degree i messed up where i was legit crazy um and do, uh, pe- do crazy things, you know. Well, people were wondering, that said 36 asks. And by the way, guys, send us your super chats as well, not just the messages, but I am going to answer this one. So uh, that said 36 asks, what was your motive for burning the barn? Oh, this this is the this is like the hardest thing to explain to anybody when um, this, this gets brought People are like, why'd you do it? Why'd you do it? And it's like, if you've never had a psychotic episode, you're not going to get it. But essentially, like your brain, you, you, you still think, oh, I'm being logical. I'm being, you know, I make sense. But you're... It's like you're look. It'd be like if you looked at like a, a page of arithmetic question, arithmetic questions, and like one of the questions is like, "What's two plus two? And in your brain, you're like, "That's oh, of course that's five. It's logically five. Like this is five. And like everyone around you knows. No, well, that's four. You know, it's four. And but you've been, you know, you've had haven't had enough sleep, and your brain's crazy enough that you're in your brain. You think you're thinking logically, and you're like, "Oh, it's five. Like two plus two equals five. So the, when people ask like the logic of why did blah, why'd you do blah 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 blah, and it's like, you know it's the same kind of question as like, you know, why did you think like uh, this movie is talking to you? Um, Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you you can't really explain it. You know, you're you're legit going crazy. um, If that makes sense. Well, how much of it do you think is legit? You going crazy versus there being kind of like some shamanistic access to the, uh, you know, woo spiritual dimension, whatever you Mm -hmm. want to say here. I'm a, that's a hard question to answer, especially schizophrenic or shamanistic. It, it's it's <laughs> kind of would say <laughs> it's a hard question to answer, especially when you're on probation, um, because uh, on probation uh, it's all mental health related, and it's all uh, diet, sleep, um, uh, that sort of thing. You know what I mean? Um, because we don't want another episode happening. Mm. Uh, <laughs> when you're on probation do you have to wear the uh you know that thing that ellen DeGeneres wore on her uh <laughs> allegedly i mean oh, do you uh, have to uh, wear any of that bracelet? stuff yeah no no because this was like a, this is a mental health thing this wasn't like this is all well, obviously was criminal related but it wasn't um wasn't like crime like i wasn't like trying to like get money from burning down a building or, or mm. hurt somebody or something like that it was literally a mental health episode so it wasn't so like the terms of probation are very very uh you know you know, follow this rule, this rule, but they're very lax because they mm. understood it's, it's a mental mm. health thing. Do you have um, to check in with the probation officer every now and then? Yeah, I check in, we talk, make sure, you know, what are you up to? I'm doing this, this internet thing, blah, 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 writing, you know, programming. Yeah. That sort Send of them stuff. a link, get them to subscribe to break the yeah. rules. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that, that would be somebody with interesting stories too, yeah. just I'm in general people with within somebody, the... Uh, yeah, yeah, when they ask me, I'm like, I'm talking to somebody who's... Uh, investigating the, the supernatural and occult links to sonic well speaking of sonic why did you choose shadow to be your uh, avatar oh i've always had a more um darker sense of you know humor and uh, identification uh, so like so sonic is fine <laughs> But you know, Shadow is much cooler to me because he's mm. kind of like the anti-hero. But he's still like he's not like a bad person. He's just kind of, you know, he's he has darker urges. You know. Yeah. Well, he has a he has a gun, which was and he has a uh, gun. And that's yeah, when I I don't have a gun because I have a felony, so I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you yes, you have a yeah you have an. I would never gun. use a gun in the illegal. You could manner. say. Now, uh, when it comes to your general experience with the internet, can you, uh, for all the people who are not aware of who Paul Town is, can you trace back steps for people as far as how in general did you uh, get involved with uh, internet culture? Oh, oh God. Yeah. That's, that's I... a long time ago. It was a cross burning I was at. Somebody said, <laughs> no, um, no. <laughs> No, uh, I I uh, I was like homeschooled, so I didn't really do much internet stuff except. Oh, for, I me did, too. Like, High yeah. five. Oh, nice. 
and that's probably why we both have such good manners. Um, <laughs> I we hold the door open for women. When yes, no, dude. Yeah. I was calling it when I went to Lee Strasberg. I called like all the like older men. I called them sir, and like I called like all the older women ma'am. <laughs> Old, <laughs> older men in a theater school. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, there's this guy. That, yeah, there's this guy who was like, no, dude. Back then, I knew that <laughs> this, the, you know, this guy old... was this guy was gay and that guy was gay and they were they were fun. You know, this is how of, old Fox, fun This is the era of like that goes back right here. So highlight oh, that. Wow. One. There's okay, a picture of me with a gun. I literally capped this in like 2016, 2017, 18. Duck, yeah. so you guys and I'm like, I just found better. it in a folder somewhere. And I'm like, yeah, yeah if I'm you notice, uh, this is like from 2017, but I'm wearing a, a Corona mask. Cause one of, skiz- <laughs> one of the powers of schizophrenia is you can predict the future. Yeah. Mm. No, it's true. There were some live streams of you from back then that you had the mask. On. Yeah. That was, but, uh, <laughs> That's one of those the schizophrenic powers. The one, the one, the one where you're powers. hugging Sean with the body pillow. That was amazing. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that that picture has me with a gun. And I'm pointing at my head, um, <laughs> very safely, uh, with my finger on the trigger. But, Wait, so was uh, that a, was that before Mr. Medicor uh, did that uh, same thing? Because that that's uh, also that's that also was like style. yeah, that was way before. It might have been. I don't. To be honest, I don't really know. That's just pointing. If you have a gun and you point it at your head, it's like very funny. Um, it's a very, it's like a common like trope like Jared Leto. Yeah, it's like a very yeah. um, especially if you. Wow, mean, I'm so crazy! Look at yeah. me, I'm on dangerous. That's, yeah, especially if you are yeah. crazy, it's very funny to do because people think it's like a joke. But you're like, no, I really want to pull the trigger and kill myself. Um, oh, YouTube, YouTube. We gotta, but we gotta you don't want to actually algorithm. do that. Yeah, you yeah. don't want to actually do that because if you do that, bad things happen. This um, now continues. <laughs> yeah, if you do that, then you enter the spirit realm, mm-hmm. and then you know bad things. Then you happen. enter the uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh shadow realm. Yeah, then you're then you realize what you're actually projecting to. You were yeah. talking to. Yeah. I mean that that is kind of one of the reasons why it's interesting for me to do the meditation because I figure like, hey, maybe I will kind of find out what exactly is going to happen in the afterlife earlier on i mean i don't know it's an interesting thought of it well i think yeah yeah it's it's i think um i can get it's been it's been long enough where people aren't gonna really pay attention um in the stream uh it's if you do that long enough i think you'll and but you do it pretty pretty regularly right yeah the meditation the uh breathing techniques pranayama all that yeah yeah i think um at least for me, it's 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 a little different since I'm schizophrenic or whatever. So it's kind of like schizo- being schizophrenic is like you kind of you get like a, a buff to that without meditating. Um, is uh, you can pick up on like vibes and and things that are not really most people aren't going to pick up on, if you know what I mean. Um, and I think if you do that long enough with like meditating, you'll probably you'll probably uh, start noticing that. Like like one thing for me like, with schizophrenia, or whatever, I can kind of tell like different people kind of have different vibes attached to them and that sort of thing. And, mm. uh, through the internet, can you tell that? Uh, yeah, I can. T- sometimes people, uh, will make a like, look at band and then they'll make a new account. And before and they'll make a different identity. I know who it is before they even say, because it's just the, the aura radiating off of what they're writing. Mm-hmm. Um, That's interesting. Yeah. My uh, father, who uh, likes to now and again play the uh, first-person uh, shooting games, you know, the multiplayer ones, he says that he can feel the rage of the people who are like the other soldiers when he, yeah, like oh, yeah. when he snipes them from a distance and stuff. You yeah, know? So, yeah. There's it, there's a lot of things I think is, with the internet, it's kind of like an interface where you can kind of if if you're very sensitive to stuff and you're open to that sort of thing, you can kind of pick up on various whether they're emotions or feelings or uh, thoughts um, of people. But that's, mm. once again, there's certain things I can't really talk about because I don't mm. want to be put on uh, anti-psychotic. <laughs> well, speaking of, uh, speaking of uh, thoughts, so, yeah. when it comes to dating, when it comes to meeting uh, girls, has it been often that you uh, met girls through the internet or has it been just meeting them through, you know, it's like... always the internet. Cause I, I'm, I live kind of, I'm, I'm kind of a homebody to be honest. I, I don't, uh, I'm not like a big partier um, or anything. I, I like to be alone. Um, 
one thing I'll, I'll say with schizophrenia or whatever, like growing up, like I would literally, I'm from my kind of big family. I would go to, I would literally go into the bathroom and like put my hand, my head between my legs and like rock back and forth just to like kind of try to like get myself not to be like, uh, not to feel uh, all the stimulation from all the people around me. Um, so I always have preferred being by myself most of the time. Uh, but I'll, I enjoy like parties and hanging out with people, but like, long term i enjoy being by myself whether that's like out in nature or by myself in like a room or writing or and that sort of thing um so with, with like dating and women and that sort of thing it's all it's all online because like in addition to that i'm also like very lazy where it's like the women have to be kind of expressing interest first um for me to even pay attention but once uh, you actually meet is there a similar uh then they thing call that the police <laughs> yeah is there a similar thing that ends up happening when you perceive them where you kind of end up inadvertently going inside of them you know not not in terms of just sex physically yeah, not but in terms of like mentally yeah you mentally going like, oh what just happened oh are they, they're pregnant <laughs> oh shit <laughs> No, but what do you mean by inside love? You mean like No, I mean when you see I, when you see someone, then you can like tell like, okay, there's going to be this and that that was in her past and all this stuff is gonna start coming up to the surface. Like do I wanna you create like a mythos almost around your relationship, you mean? Yeah. Not think, even, um... Well not even relationships, just like meeting meeting somebody oh. just for the first couple of hours. It's almost like yeah, I think, if it, yeah. I think the term for it is like cold reading. Is that what the the mm. The yeah, cold cold reading CIA is what people. Is. Yeah, um, that's like people that claim to be um, mediums and stuff. Dude. Yeah, mm. I think uh, it's also I think because I just I've dealt with so many people over the last like half decade. I've interacted with so many people. Like you kind of pick up on things like oh somebody's only gonna be saying this if they had this sort of thing happen or they're gonna act this way about this sort of thing and you kind of get a sixth sense about certain things um but as far as being inside people uh i don't really know i think for me it's always online or offline doesn't really matter it's i can kind of pick up pick up uh, how to best communicate with people uh, either way you know what i mean Mm. Average centrist, what do you think about this so far? Any any thoughts? Uh, on what specifically? Uh, just the whole conversation, or the whole conversation? What we're talking about uh, these uh, kind of like ex extrasensory abilities that uh, Paul Town was uh, alluding to. I mean, you're living in England. There's a particular mm. culture over there, but you also said that you uh, uh, interacted with and uh, new people who uh, have uh, similar things going on. So, uh, kind of yeah. curious what your thoughts are. Oh man, I mean, it's um, it's been a weird one with me, like, because uh, I wanted to bring up um, psychedelics with you, Paul, because I don't, I'm yeah. not sure if you've ever done them or not. I, have I, not. I feel if you haven't. No, literally, that's like the that's like the specific stuff I've I've avoided. I mean, I probably won't avoid them forever, but I feel like I'm I have my grasp on reality is in a, in a certain way where it's like I don't need that yet. You know what I mean? Like. I feel like yeah, it well, might push me over the edge. Yeah, I mean, the, the reason I ask is because I yeah. knew somebody with schizophrenia when I used to live in Leeds. Yeah. And um, he he would take them, like, all the time, like, all the time, like, almost every weekend, like, or even more than that. And uh, his journey over the years has been, like, pretty crazy. Like, I don't really speak to him anymore. In fact, the last I heard about him is that he's homeless now. Yeah, he's a demonically possessed freak. Yeah, I kind of it went down that road, but the, the thing, the Wait, thing with who? it, who? Uh, a friend. I'm getting, I don't want to be mean. I'm just, I'm just... No, oh. well, it's, I'm just being real about it, but like yeah. it's just, um, like because he was a very good person. Like when I first met him, like he wasn't completely off the rails yet. He was like, kind of still lucid, but yeah. um, and he there was like a very kind interior to him as well. But like over time, I saw like how this stuff was like perverting his mind like even more. Oh, yeah. and, uh, and that's why I just wondered about it because because like to him he would always say that it was helping him but it was very clearly not helping him. yeah I would but, say um different drug classes feed different like things inside of you uh and I think yeah. people who are more people who are more uh sensitive to certain things um they probably shouldn't uh mess around with certain things until they're like a certain age and even then it's like you should 
you have to be like in the position where you know it works or it doesn't work you know what i mean but it's weird though because isn't that sort of like the quandary of mental illness is that do you know that you're quote unquote ill like is that a conscious when you're on medication does it like come to you as like oh i this is must be what a normal person feels like or is it like like imagine if a blind person could see again is it like that or is it more nuanced than that is it yeah well it's really it it depends on perspective because it's like certain things i believe like now people be like oh you're mentally ill and certain things you're like oh you're not mentally ill that's you're totally right Mm -hmm. um i think it really comes down to a level of self-awareness and Mm -hmm. um it's hard I i think especially like like your your friends and just we're like if you don't have a certain self-awareness that, to realize that like I'm actually kind of being deluded and I'm being like uh, I'm tricking myself or something is tricking me inside of me uh, you're just going to end up like taken over by uh, whatever it is you're you're messing with um, and that, that's like a big thing I've noticed with psychedelics and the reason I've never really messed with them is that um, I have noticed like of all the drug classes like for some reason psychedelics like they have like the tendency to somebody will take them and they'll be like taken over where if they see a little bit of like criticism about psychedelics, they like become an insane person and like insanely like passive aggressive and like attack people instead of like we've had this happen on the show. Yeah. And and it's like, well, isn't this like the drug that's supposed to like get rid of your ego? Like it seems kind of yeah, ironically enough, they don't yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's there are other reasons for that, but I think like there's there's this weird relationship between like schizo culture and like on on one hand like this weird romanticism around it that was largely a product of like certain aspects of the new left and then later like the new age movement but now it's almost like to be um like fully integrated into uh like it seems that like all, all of these things are just coming up now and it's like people are getting more accustomed to it. Like there is this like God awful thread the other day about like, I'm a late millennial and we grew up with the internet too. It's like all this bullshit. But really when you think of it, zoomers, they've grown up with this schizo effective um, machine at their fingertips mm. from the time that they're mm. born. Yeah. And, yeah. and like now I, well, I, I zoomers, truly think well, well, that, a what about lot of boomers? it's like social con- socially conditioned, like Paul was saying. Hmm. It's not I mean, like, I mean, there is chemical, like I'm not a denialist, like there is chemical imbalances in the brain, but I do think that the sort of social guest largely, it does affect, I think, the severity of it. Like, yeah. like people like Bob Hick- Hickman, for instance. I mean, let's not go down the fucking Chris Chan road again in this stream, but... <laughs> Uh, people like Bob Hip- Hickman or like even the OG like schizo posters like Francis E. Dak, they have this like weird relationship to technology and they have this relationship to how they spread their message and how they they get certain like talismanic phrases across. Like Bob, Hip- Bob Hickman, he starts everything with the same phrase. God entered my body like a body same size as me flowing into you and you flowing into me. And it's like, I think these people, they, they existed in ancient times, but they, it seems like there's a spectacle behind it. It's like yeah, weird. It, it, spectacle. That's the thing too. Mm. I was, I wanted to say with, with this stream too, is that like occult stuff, mental health stuff, whether it's schizophrenia or autism, it's like, I don't know. I've always like, for me personally, like I'm doing like creative stuff. That's not specifically related to that. Um, mm. Like I'm interested in, in various things which are like strange or whatever and I have obviously I have like a, a mental condition um but for me that's it's always been weird when people make that into their like I'm schizophrenic so I'm going to talk about schizophrenia and mm. I'm you know yeah. I'm I hear voices like that's what I'm going to talk about it's like all right like you you hear voices mm. good for you like yeah. don't I mean do, you, like, do the do voices do the voices tell you something interesting that's worth repeating that's the, yeah that's the, and it's the like question to me it's like the same thing for me with like the the reason like like occult stuff and that sort of stuff like it's interesting but it's like i just i don't see why people make it their their personality and it's like yeah it's like okay, you have like certain things you do and you look into and you're interested in and the same thing with like schizophrenia like you have certain things about you that make you different and you make sure you make it so you have to live life in a certain way but do you like have hobbies 
do you like do something do you like have a reason to be alive or are you just mm. like mentally ill <laughs> um, well, what specifically motivates you like as a writer like it, it seems that you've pioneered i would say like let's call it um internet like e e-culture uh type of writing that is in a weird way like similar to new journalism in that you're blending personal narrative with story with like narrativization isn't that kind of like samizdat or whatever yeah like this weird sort of e-samizdat that you've like people like you and mike ma have helped pioneer mm-hmm. like what what is motivating oh, i hope i didn't you? help pioneer something i don't want <laughs> people, i don't want to be linked to anything anybody else makes um no but like you're in the same like i would say uh era of like largely like you know twitter and chan culture like yeah. sama stock posters like you know like mike mon delicious tacos and other yeah. people but but what motivates you specifically when you're writing because it's very much like it's very much like aphoristic and the stories themselves you can't really like tell like we've talked about this before like you can't tell that sort of like what is ironic and what is sincere but even yeah. beyond that like what what really makes you tick like what is the process by which is it just grabbing things that you intuitively feel and in, from your own life or is yeah. it sort of like a hyper is it like a sort of a like a surrealistic picture of like what you experience yeah have you heard of peter thiel oh yes uh, and you know, he's, a, he's a i'm being proud paid. donor of this i'm podcast. being paid to write no, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, you no, too. I'm kidding. No. Uh, we missed the uh, yeah, meeting. We I'm should have been in a meeting a together. But... I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting paid a lot of money to tweet. <laughs> um, no, uh, uh, what motivates you? I, it's always just kind of expressing myself. And um, yeah, it, it's really just trying to really, like, especially like I just wrote like a book called The Rose or whatever, which is like a, it's literally not political at all. It's just like a it's like supernatural horror book or whatever mm. um like a novel um and it, it's not um really at the core of it it's just like an artistic creative um uh, drive to express myself because it, it's i look around and it's not like i don't i don't really see any outlet for myself um in terms mm. of oh i can go here's a career i can do and it's a nine to five and i can feel good about doing that go home have a wife and kids and you know just be a good member of society like i feel like at this point like the only avenue for me to express my energy and and basically express myself and feel okay about myself feel like oh like you know i'm i don't hate myself is pretty much writing and expressing what i think is the truth um and kind of putting my point of view out into the world in a way where i can't really do it if i'm at a job programming or I'm doing some political thing or I'm, you know, the, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it's really just personal. Yeah. It's just genuine personal artistic uh, creativity. It's but, not really any, uh, anything external. It's it very, it's all internal stuff. Yeah. It sounds like it's maybe got a little bit of a therapeutic, like cathartic type thing yeah. to it as well. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's a good way to um, the stuff I'm frustrated about or the stuff that, that makes me upset or the stuff that I, I see, around me that i can't do anything about it's it's a good way to kind of burn out the energy in a, in a mm. way that mm. doesn't end up yeah. with mm. me going to prison <laughs> it, uh, it, it almost feels though like when it comes to artists such as yourself who go very deep as far as extracting things that are going on inside and then you compare it to these so-called artists with their artistic statements and all this bullshit that end up getting all this uh, media pizzazz, you know, as these quote-unquote artists, and they're the ones that the establishment likes. Uh, Has this always gone on to a certain extent? I don't believe so. If we look back at, uh, like, Gio, you know, the... uh, Well, hold on, though. You know know the artist, for example, like... uh, uh, Rippy Core? uh, well, no, like like a uh, e- Egon Sheila and oh, uh, yeah. before before him, what was the name of his master? Not master, but like influence. Gustav uh, Klimt. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Gustav Klimt. Yeah. Like Gustav Klimt kind of worked off these rich women who he uh, had uh, sex yep. with, and uh, all the time, he also, all the time. <laughs> I think that's why. That's why. I think that's why he was. 
Mm-hmm. Only it's like uh, e-girls. Look like this comic yeah. costume, low Frank Castle logo, or all. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Well, I think this is why he was wearing that robe. By the way, if you ever take a look at a photo of Gustav mm. Klimt, you'll notice here's a nice photo of him. I'm gonna post. This is the one. Yeah, of him he with wanted. The, uh, he was going beyond cat. like the pic. He, he he was trying to like become like I, I guess nowadays that's become very like reified and stereotypical in like art school. But like he was trying to embrace the an older picture of an artist as a like mm. a crazy wanderer rather than like the uh, serious but, academic pursuit but see that that's not that's not all i think the reason why he wore the robe specifically is because it's very easy to just you know uh put the robe up have sex and then put it back down again and paint mm. i'm just saying yeah you know, like uh there's a very well that's practical... like Geiger only wore black because of his uh when he was doing airbrushing he would get like ink stains all over himself, so he didn't. Yeah. yeah. Although, well, although it does, it does make me think though. Mm -hmm. Would he, would he, let's say, finish off the act after he paints it? Because if it's before, then it's kind of like your creative juices are kind of gone. You know, like your mm. vril is kind of drained. So I don't know. I'm curious, like if any of the women who have had experience posing and then having sex with Gustav Klimt, if they've ever worn, if they've ever uh, written about that uh, whole uh, thing, that whole the creative order process. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, well, that's, that's yeah. another thing that people don't realize is the, how real that dynamic is of mm. energy and, and, and uh, women and men and, and how women steal it from men. Um, They're real. They're real. Yeah. Uh, let's well, that's like that's like Lucian they're Freud slept with a lot of his models mm. in order yeah. to paint. And it, well, it's, um, <laughs> well, they're real and their time in terms of attention. Like there's a lot of attention that and their uh, energy. Is, yeah, a spiritual energy. Yeah. yeah. Well, no. time is a sp I mean, time is the most valuable valuable thing that we have. Yeah. So that's yeah, why it's I important. waste a huge chunk of it. All no, time. no, but Gio, it really depends on who you're with because if you find and somebody, and Logo de Delius is stealing your time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stealing his time, motherfucker. Yeah. No, but no, I, I, he's in the astral yeah. realm playing. With <laughs> no, but I guess the lesson the lesson here is that if you find somebody that's not a waste of time, somebody that you could actually get along with and learn from and have a great rapport with then that is not a waste of time but there are so many people out there that are not that that's yeah that, that's the big problem mm -hmm. yeah no and and, and and i would say the so there, there's like the back to the the gustav whatever what's his last name again? gustav, gustav Klimt. Klimt, yeah Klimt, yeah, the, yeah with the women and that sort of thing is well, a lot of people don't realize is that that's pretty much like that dynamic of you know the the, whether or not he's having sex with women before or after the this the whatever he's doing is um that applies a lot to like like um twitter stuff. like the reason the reason i'm like successful is that i get people to hate me and i get them to i'm stuck in their head you know and mm. every time they think about me they send a little bit of energy you know across the astral realm to my astral body mm -hmm. and my astral body gets a bit, bit bigger every time and, no dude uh, that that's the way it works i mm -hmm. i actually find that that sonic video by the way that i put out it got more dislikes than any of the videos on max Derrick's channel and i think that's a good thing because that means that it's not a lukewarm response either people really love it or people really hate it and i found that that's been my life for the most part like either people really detest me and hate me with all their guts uh or you know they really like me yeah. and both kind of work to lift to, to lift lift me up in the way yeah you know, if, if mm. you're getting people to feed you energy basically um, exactly i think that. like it's it's very interesting when you are um when you're caught up i think in sort of like a like a negative feedback loop of like discourse on the internet like after a while you do realize that it's pointless in some ways to mm. like but if people love it though people love blood sports yeah yeah drama. that's the, the key is the, you the know key is to get people to obsess over you and stalk you yeah and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, like yeah. Into get into that knife love realm you know yeah, yeah. and yeah and get yeah. them to kind of create an imaginary version of you inside them mm. But and that's what I, I mean. They create like feeds, an ergogor, yeah. that like an imaginary, like uh, a a golem of you, and then like they yeah. can burn it down. Yeah, which and, I mean, some people was 
like me, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll be, I'll be, you know, I'm off having sex, you know, like I do a lot. Somewhere in the field with a beautiful woman, and there's yeah. just people on the internet just thinking about me burning down buildings. <laughs> and just the more they think about it, the better the sex gets. <laughs> oh, the, I think the, no, but the astral it's... creature. Yeah, but it's true. It does live on in your mind. Like, um, it's very, it's very interesting how, on the one hand, we build up like we're craving for control in any sense of like someone to like guide the way but then we tear them down with equal frequency yeah it's like this yeah, it's weird to um master where you're sending your energy and that sort of stuff yeah. and it's very it's very obvious with with some women and with like uh, like e-girls with like simps and that sort of stuff and, mm-hmm. and like only mm-hmm. fans thing but it's, it's it's a real thing for it's just less obvious for like internet stuff um and it's really um it's really important to master yourself in, in the sense of where you're directing your energy and whether you're whether or not you're getting caught up in mm. this person hates me this person dislikes me or oh, this person likes me or this person says something about me that's not true because if, if you don't get caught up if you don't master yourself in that you're just going to get dominated by that and mm. but like mm. after a while like it's it seems to be the same response like every time like one of these like fucking like chapo like irony like leftists have found me it's always the same it's like you're a virgin you haven't had sex in years or like you're like a general virgins there yeah yeah it's all that same shit well like technically speaking though virgins cannot uh no not have sex in years they would just never had sex no no but it's the same like reply of like you're doing a wrong thing bro or like it's Mm. at the end of the day um you have the only way to like truly deflect criticism i think is to either embrace it or to have the power of bogging people to the point where it's not worth it and i think well, that's the big problem with a lot of you celebs they just didn't learn how to like embrace the meme you know? yeah it's 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 for me i don't know because the thing is like of all it's it's funny when i think about it like of all the people who like who should get made fun of and like have like a reason to be like called a bad person like i i have i'm pretty much on the top of the list because like <laughs> kind of building. um but it's 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 not um the the most important yeah it, it, it's it's really the reason and i if i look at myself and this sounds haughty but compared to like most people who've been around as long as i have and kind mm-hmm. of been in the public eye there's very few people I've noticed who've been able to keep themselves grounded and keep themselves yeah, very from few, very few. either like getting mm-hmm. caught up in what are people saying about me in private or, you know, or I'm the best or I'm the worst or, you know, what if yeah. people find out about this about me? Um, and really it, it comes down to, you have to master, especially if you're doing internet stuff, you have to master where you're directing your intention and where you're directing your uh, attention, not just your mm-hmm. intention. Cause the more, if, if you don't have a grip on that, the more attention you get, the more it'll go out of control and the more you'll start like getting neurotic and psychotic and that sort of thing. Mm. Yeah, you, you do see like... that a lot as well. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, ahead, sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, I didn't mean to. I was just agreeing. Uh, I've, I've no, seen, no, seen that. No, you, know, you never need to apologize. Uh, please, whenever you have any thought, I would love to apologize hear it. now. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, you have to almost be a nomad of sorts. Like, yeah. you yeah. have to. Wait, you uh, have to be a nomad. Guy. You shouldn't get mad. No mad, yeah. you know? <laughs> when you do get mad, that's pretty much, like, when it's over. It's okay to get mad, but it has to be, like, a righteous anger. It has to be a righteous yeah. anger. Every yeah. time I've gotten mad online, that was... I, I like to think, like, I've been there. But then there's some there's some things that I feel you just have to, like, uh, realize that this is juvenile high school bullshit. Yeah. Not, like, not yeah. even high school, grade school. And that, like, at the end of the day it's not it's of no consequence like my biggest thing is like i don't care as long as i'm around to like spread my message or whatever like all the other bullshit is like yeah i understand but i think like specifically when it comes to the question of forming relations on the internet i mean in one sense um the person we can't avoid mentioning he's right in one sense that a lot of these are a lot of these relationships are ephemeral. And I think people who are accustomed to a degree of social isolation, they can get the impression that like this 
like random person that you're contacting every single day on Twitter or wherever, mm. that they're your friend. But then I think like that's such a cynical view to say that eventually you can't transcend over into something that maybe not the way that you experience a deep friendship, but some mm-hmm. sort of camaraderie. Like there's been yeah. people I know on Twitter that I, I don't know their names or face. Like Zero HP Lovecraft is one. Like I don't know his name or face, right? Like, but he's helped me out through the years. And like that's one example. And it's like I feel like um we have to cope in in a world that has gone totally insane. I think that we have to like in some ways it's the only option that a lot of us have as sad as that sounds, but I don't know. Like, yeah, it's, 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 it really depends. It's like, if you don't master, well, you don't even have to master, but if you don't get a good grip on it, where you're most of the mm. time good, um, it just, you're going to be miserable. Uh, it's going to yeah. scale. The misery is going to scale in proportion to how successful you are. And mm. like, if, if you look at like, and this is like a weird comment because it's it's it, you have to be aware of you the spiritual battle going on. You oh yes, understand the it's astral a spiritual war going battle on. on the astral plane. What's going on? It's an info war. That's a spiritual yeah. war. <laughs> it's, it's true. But then the but then another uh, problem mm-hmm. I think ends up happening when people do attach themselves to what would be the closest thing to friendship. Maybe not meaning that's the only friendship they ever experienced, but something that, let's say, gets them through the day where they are able to engage with people who share ideas they otherwise uh, wouldn't find, you know, in their hometown. Then a problem, and I do think it's kind of a problem that ends up happening, is there's going to be more reluctance for them to leave the reservation, so to speak. You know, if uh, they do have certain contrary views that start uh, cropping up, you know, if they start to question like, you know, I it gets harder to even question that at that point, because if you're part of any community, be it people who are more on the left, more on the right, whatever, if you question certain ideas, then that would kind of exclude you in a way. There's always a fear like, what if I say something that people are going to take the wrong way and now I'm not going to be part of this thing anymore? So how exactly uh, would you see uh, people dealing with uh, with those elements there? I, I can speak to this a little bit because mm. I've actually experienced this in real life because like, I'm not an e-celeb in, in any respect. That's, so a I don't know. That's a good thing. Don't, don't, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have the experience of going through that, but like in my own life, like on Facebook and stuff like that, like... I live in a, in small towns in Wales and everybody knows each other. You know what I mean? So it's like, if you say something and you say a political opinion, everybody knows about it. And um, that's caused like a lot of friction. Like just, just one example is like the riots in 2020 over BLM. I came out against it and stuff. And a lot of people like came down hard on me about it. And like a lot, lost a lot of friends and stuff. And it was like a really weird time of my life to go through all that. Like I was going through a bit of like a nervous breakdown over it because I'd meet people in real life and I tried to speak to them. I could barely get out two words to them because I just constantly felt like this judgment on me for my political beliefs that I didn't have for them. Like, even though I know they're all like much more lefty than I am, like I don't judge them in that same way, but I knew that they were judging me. And it was like a really, I don't know, it just sent me into a really weird paranoia and um, I don't know, man, I don't know how, I, since the way I've dealt with it over the years is that I've just learned to let it go and just go, right, they weren't my friends in the first place. You know what I mean? Like, mm. and just be like, they were never really my friends. They were just people I used to get fucked up with, you know, like that's, that's all it is. But that, but then what ends up happening is uh, not specifically you, but other people would go into other online communities, whether they're like, you know, extreme leftist communities, anarchist mm. communities, whatever, uh, or, you know, more traditionalist communities, reactionary communities. And they do find that to be a refuge away from the masses of normies that have mm. succumbed to very particular ways of thinking about life. But then it's like, where do you go from here? How difficult is it not to follow the crowd at that point for most people? Because I know most people, I don't know, I think most people are just an autopilot. Uh, They're not going to take as much time to look for a different point of view than whatever they happen to have at the time. And uh, Mm -hmm. 
that that's been a big concern. I mean, this is like one of the reasons why I do this whole thing with BTR, trying to bring people together that otherwise wouldn't speak, is because mm-hmm. it does feel like once you do go into these bubbles, kind of like as a refuge from uh, those experiences that you talked about, then how would most people escape? You know, my my concern is that most people wouldn't escape. Most people would just go with whatever narrative ends up being the one that grows, you know, that grows from that particular community. It does seem to be like that. Like, it does seem that, like, people get kind of um, pressured into going along with it. Because I, I had a few people come to me behind closed doors, like in DMs and stuff that I know, who would never come out publicly and say, oh, I thought this was kind of bullshit, or I thought this kind of left-wing opinion was bullshit or whatever. Uh, but they'll come to me behind closed doors because they know that I speak out against it. And even though I get no likes, I get no interaction on my posts or whatever, uh, occasionally people will come to me behind closed doors and be like, no, I actually think there's some fucked up shit going on here. Um, but I feel like they feel like trapped in a way. Yeah. Because I always feel like, well, why can't you just say mm. this out loud? You know what I mean? I do. Co- join me. Like, come and join me out here. Yeah. You know? But yeah. Um, but they're just too scared to do it. And it's, yeah, it's sad. Uh... It, it, that's the one thing I've kind of realized doing this for a while is that like I'm not I, I've obviously I have political beliefs or I have uh, social beliefs or I think this works this doesn't work blah 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 I think this yeah. is better than this better blah 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 but that's not my motivation for doing stuff um, something I kind of realized with, with regards to anything whether it's left wing or right wing is that you get the people into groups and you know it's very easy to come up with, oh, we do this, 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 and this, 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 and this, and this. And people are in their heads, they're like, all right, we'll do this, and then this will happen, and this will happen, and then Utopia will be here. And um, obviously that never happens, whether you're left wing yeah. or right wing. And once that never, once mm-hmm. it doesn't happen and time goes on, then the leaders of that, those like little, like, little like droplets of like insane people uh, have to have to come up with some reason for why you know, the ideas aren't being implemented. And that always goes towards, oh, well, you know, you know, if it's right wing people, oh, well, you know, it's Peter Thiel is, in- is infiltrating our groups. And <laughs> Antifa is, you know, they're putting females on the internet to mess with us. Um, and, the, the, the last you know. one's actually true, though. I'm pretty sure. Well, Gio, you just Anyways, hate women. That's... You just hate women. Uh, women uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, except for, you know, except for your cuties, you know, um, but, um, <laughs> but it's, you know, and it's, it's like you, it's like you, centrist, like you're saying, it's like, it gets to the point where people are like, they've, they've scapegoated the other side so much that it's like, it's impossible for anybody to even communicate. And this is why like Lev's, like this show is so important because it's, oh, yeah. it, it, you know, it, at a certain point, it, like it breaks the spell of like, oh, like these are my enemies. And it's like, oh no, like we have a disagreement. Like, mm. but I'm not gonna kill anybody and yeah. like, inf- like make my will on the world. And you're not gonna do that either. So like, we should probably like just talk and be like normal. You know what I, I mean? mean? I mean, it works uh, until there's a certain point of no return when it comes to. I mean, I always bring up the furry stream, but that's just like a prime example where there was one person that even the mere utterance of uh, Vincent Void, who's doing really great musically by the way but uh vincent void who said that he's an anti-fur just because he said that that was enough to <laughs> that was <laughs> sorry that was enough to make this guy uh leave and he just looked completely traumatized even though i think we were handling him with kid gloves when it came to how a lot of these things were discussed so it's like i'm a big certain member of the furry community and i support the furries oh, i think yeah. you should buy all my books Princess, uh, Princess Sally Acorn, <laughs> all the way. If you like, if you like Shadow, you love Princess Who's that Sally one on Acorn. Twitter that's got the the acorn, like <laughs> one of the worst accounts. It's like, I know you're talking about the squirrel thing. The squirrel. Yeah. Oh man. Wait, 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 wait. What about the squirrel? This is what, like what one we... of the worst accounts on Twitter. That this is annoying. It's like lefty. Just like left, like basically oh, blue and blue Oh, and I, I know, I know who yeah. you're talking about. No, no, no. This yeah. is this is Princess Sally right here. Paul, thoughts. She looks like a little young to give my thoughts, you know. Like, Wait, really? Not wearing any clothes, you know. Yeah, well, that's like the Bugs Bunny thing, right? Like Bugs Bunny, Porky Pig. None of them wore any clothes, but it was not considered to be uh, sexual. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. yeah, it sounds like um, I'm more of a Lola Bunny. Um, mm. A Lola Bunny. <laughs> well, fun yeah. fact: they were voiced by the same uh, actress. So she has oh, the same man. aura. 
Yes, same. exactly. Same well, story. it's funny. I watched, I saw this, um, this article the other day about, what was it, like the rise in female autism and female schizophrenia, something like that. And I'm thinking like, is it like people who are being diagnosed more? And it's like, I don't know. I think like, in a weird way, I know this sounds totally like antithetical to like the medical consensus, but in like a weird way, um, a lot of like, a lot of like the e-girl is basically trying to portray a pastiche of femininity, but it's very like calculated and masculine. And like a lot of people say that female autism, like one of the traits is like high hyper masculinity. And it's like, I, I wonder if there's that connection there that like a lot of women they're like, because like the modern world or whatever is like forcing them into more of a masculine role and like, that they have to like take on an almost like yeah. autistic character. Yeah, I, I think there's like a dimorphism of mentality, both male and female, mm. of like primary, primarily uh, passive consumers and primarily active producers. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think with females especially, it's you're gonna get it's gonna be like it's gonna come off kind of almost masculine in the sense that those are the females that are gonna be successful because they're able to. Mm. Uh, utilize their their physical characteristics to basically extract money from men um, mm. and attention. Well, spe- speaking of using physical characteristics to extract money, this was uh, Rouge the Bat, as you know, who shadowed the Hedgehog. I think they're friends. I'm not sure, or if, what, I don't know the official mm. the the official friends uh, biography. Benefits. Friends with benefits. Mm. For, yeah, definitely friends with uh, bat benefits. Yeah. and uh, you could see like Sega really tried to do a number. Um, I like the I like create, the bat wings. Yeah, bat wings are not ba- are not bad. Like Sega really tried to do a number in making this like overly like just look at how ultra sexualized here. Let me hide for a I don't second. Know, yeah, that highlight might be a bit of projection on your part. Do you think she's hyper? No, 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 no. First of all, look, she's got the lipstick. She's got the <laughs> she's got the boobs over here on the side. This is yes. not this is not a projection. That's like we, yeah, that's got the. Yeah, I would. <laughs> she's got oh, like the God. kind of. Um, I would one hundred percent. Oh, you know, easy. in Greece, when what Sandy becomes like more like badass at the end, she's got that kind of vibe going on. Wait, yeah. Sandy from Sp- oh oh Sandy from, oh, yeah. from Greece from yeah. Greece yeah yeah oh I think, god um, yeah I think the, the bat wings give a good hint that, that Shadow and her, his cohort is like <laughs> cathonic really they're really cathonic yeah abilities. cathonic they, they the embody the sexual persona yeah and I think That's... I think Levy when next time you get access to Max's YouTube you should make a make a video about um. <laughs> about shadow the hedgehogs like his kind of dark entity like what like what he's representing and stuff yeah well i don't know i thought just by the name you know shadow the hedgehog young's the shadow but that's too yeah. on the nose that's too obvious you know somebody yeah. said that he represents jesus christ i don't know if that's i don't think that's <laughs> no because shadow doesn't die shadow doesn't sacrifice himself he does does Don't he? you remember? Yeah, Sonic Adventure Two. At that's, the end of it, no, so that's, spoiler, that's the, Sorry, but no, that's the uh, fake story that they try <laughs> you know, to push. You know what's <laughs> kind of it's called predictive programming. They you know what's get crazy? Sh- people who identify with Shadow the Hedgehog to sacrifice themselves. I wonder. I want. You know what's crazy though? Um, someone replied to my joke post of like that uh, mural of like everyone from like Varge to Lauren Southern to uh, Tyre. Yeah, uh, I I didn't I don't know I never got along with Tyre. He was the gay bodybuilder. Tier, um, yeah, he. Uh, Tier. I talked to him a bit. Yeah. He's a, he was a nice. He was nice to me. But I think. Yeah. He I heard he was nice. Person. I mean, if he comes back, I'd probably be different because at the time I think it was part of a uh, certain. Uh, well, I won't mention it. So uh, right. <laughs> certain groups that were against him, but yeah. I think yeah, I heard he was a good guy. No, but it, someone replied to me, uh, Bison supremacist on Twitter. Weird. It feels like further back in history than things that happened chronologically prior to it. And I said, maybe because we experienced that time, 2016 to 17 is like a dream state. Uh, I think when it, they talk about schizophrenia, well, there's this temporality involved in it. Like, it's it's almost as if like our sense of time has been distorted to the extent that something five years ago can seem like a thousand centuries ago or can become vivid and mythological. But something that was like in our childhood becomes like, you remember it like yesterday or it becomes so mundane that mm. you don't even think about it. And I'm just thinking of like uh, the, the one line um, 
that like Dillas and Guattari, they talked about when it comes to um, how the schizophrenic complicates like the history of Western philosophy in terms of Descartes, because with Descartes, he predicates like the cogito, I'm butchering it, but he predicates the cogito as like this perfect, I know, I think therefore I am, my mind is giving me a perfect picture of reality, but they're saying, well, no, there's a lot of people that have certain disorders where that becomes complicated. And what happens when you can't like take that Archimedean point of all Western philosophy and like from the enlightenment onwards as like, you know, the cogito, I think therefore I am what happens when we just throw that out the window because there are people who experience reality that where literally their lying eyes cannot perceive. Right. Like, yeah. so I wonder if time has a relation to that as well. You know what I mean? Like, because if we, if our time, because of the internet is so distorted our sense of it has become so fundamentally lost i wonder like what that says about like just people's common experiences and how we remember things because it seems like before all of this is like slowly eroding in our vision because nowadays like the internet chronologicals like chronologically categorizes every experience and yes there are data losses there are networks that go down there's servers that crash but at the end of the day there's still like it's it's very it's like what people said about the introduction of film it's like now you can see the past right or a version of it Mm -hmm. it's like what does that do to our innate memory and our innate experience experience from that memory that the ancients saw for instance when it came to oral traditions and so forth right yeah yeah Hmm. that's it yeah go ahead say sorry uh, no, I'm done. The uh, the only thing I could think of here is I think that there's more of a uh, exercise that goes on when it comes to using one's imagination, remembering certain things as opposed to having certain things done for you. This is why I'm very skeptical of uh, you know as much as I'm into VR, AR, all that stuff. I'm very skeptical of the benefits that would have for people if all of a sudden everything is going to be spoon fed to them as far as visual information and how to do certain things. It's almost like this is something that's going to make the experience that people have living just uh, very stunted. And Mm -hmm. as a result, these, whatever you want to call them, psychic or whatever, like any, any powers people would otherwise be able to utilize when it comes to to borrow that whole thing from Jason Giorgiani when he was talking about Prometheism, uh, when he was talking about this ability for human beings to see into the future and to plan ahead. Like, I think mm-hmm. this is kind of like something that separates us from the animals, where we are able to plan ahead, not just relying on their instincts, which, yeah, like animals, they can sense earthquakes and things like that, but to plan ahead and to construct something in order to mitigate whatever problems happens in the future, that is a power that without imagination i think would totally just fall apart and turn us into some you know gub gub snail man no but uh, what i mean like to make it simpler is that um the basic like the basic assumption of western rationalism and philosophy is that your mental faculty can deliver you a guarantee of reality what happens when that faculty gets thrown out of whack that's simply, I think, what at the heart mm. of what Deleuze and Guattari were trying to say. Like, I know I but, come but, off but are, but are we all a little bit off of whack? Like, is there no? A, but that's what I mean. Now here? that we don't Not have me. this same, I'm totally in whack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. totally sane. Um, uh, yeah. no, I would say, yeah, no, love. I get what you're saying, and I think I agree that I think it's a bad thing because I think we're basically just building up like these like little tools and toys people can have if they're not succeeding in life to like not feel bad about not succeeding and that's in concert with like actually the the cost of succeeding being getting higher and higher so you're kind of you're creating this this stratified like reality of like well you're a loser in real life but you have vr so you can like jerk off to like porn or something um (laughs) like and you can waste away doing that yeah Um, rouge the bat becomes your waifu (laughs) yeah yeah you can yeah you can become the you can become sonic the hedgehog in your brain yeah and, uh, you could go fast yeah. even though like your legs have been atrophied from like, yeah. <laughs> sitting down for like yeah, pretty much um, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to touch on something you were just saying Lev, about like how it's in 
this is impeding our ability to move into the future like in an organized way and i think i think like you're all you're all kind of right in that like the way that time is being distorted is that everything's just in the now it's like the news cycle goes from day to day and people forget things that happened just a few days ago and stuff like that and people don't have a very good view of history anymore so they don't have a good tool to understand mm. where these things are going you know what i mean so like i'm not sure if i'm putting this point together very well but maybe you can see what i'm getting at but like it's it, it is distorting like how people are viewing current events because it is just mm. they're not viewing it from a historical lens they're viewing it yeah. from the here and now like day to day and they just yeah they're just kept in the here and now it's like they're herded but, into it but they're also that, like reading a narrative into it that is in a way like not seeing simply like not seeing something simply as like a, an event but now it has to be one in toto with like some grand political narrative that mm. has been foisted upon mm. you by like weird networks of power like it can't just be a cigar as a cigar now it has to represent either like this like totally um like it's got to be based on one side or it's got to be uh what's like the leftist equivalent of base like it's got to be I, well woke, yeah woke or whatever right mm. like it's it's gotta be it, it's like these people they want to like you know put me in camps and and whatnot and if like we have to just yeah it's like you can't like yeah. normal events like have become taken up in this like discourse mm. of but, but um, geo like you were talking yeah. about zoomers you were talking about zoomers before right, right, right. being screwed up i personally think that a good contender would also be the boomers like there's people oh, yeah. I know. They're totally like, a psyop generation. Yeah, like, like there's this there's this old woman who thinks that now that Biden's in charge, like this is and yes, I guess many people here would agree with her, but the way that she says it and the way that she would just like take over people's conversations and just like start <laughs> harassing people on the phone talking about, you know, like this is the end of America. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah. blue and on like Go to like yeah, their brains any... are not their brains are not like situated to deal with like the just the insane like <laughs> choose your own no. adventure of psychosis that, that the internet has allowed people mm. to have. There, there. I think like that's the big problem with like normies getting involved. Like, there's this great tweet by Marquita Passad where he's like, you know, Facebook is way more hardcore than Twitter because um like some boomer is like hating something and like they have no. Um, knowledge of like how to process it through like the information network lens so they have to like have this like super like in your face um like it, <laughs> i'll show it to you it's it's crazy um mm. but yeah yeah it's it's like this weird the boomers were different because they grew up with medium that was largely like one dimensional in one way like, yeah they like the t television informed them like you could have a letter to the editor, but what did that mean? Nowadays, like the medium that you're imbibing in literally not just speaks to you, but you can like go to your favorite like content creator on Twitter or like on Facebook or wherever and tell them to go fuck off, right? Like that's, it's it's this different dynamic here. I found the tweet. Um, <laughs> this, I, lo I love this for some reason. Um, what does is it the, show up there? Uh, let's yeah. see, here we go. Yes. And I'm gonna save Facebook for this. <laughs> That's funny. That's really funny. Yeah. Oh, oh man. man, yes. And, and please don't please don't say vocally the second part for the algorithm's sake. Good. But uh, uh, <laughs> going, back, going, going back to uh, going back to the thing I mentioned with um, uh, uh, oh my God, what is wrong with me? Uh, that uh, uh, the artist that we were talking about before, Gustav, uh, Egon yeah, Schiele? Gustav, no, Gustav Klimt. Yeah. So oh. with uh, with Gustav Klimt, I wonder, like, beyond the rich women that Gustav uh, had sex with, the art world at that time, or like society in general, just as an outsider looking at. You know, just like the typical things, the way people dressed and, uh, you know, the kind of things that were held up to be examples of uh, not high culture even, but just like culture in general, just like the entertainment. It looks as if the whole standards have just gone downhill, lowest common denominator. But then again, maybe I wasn't, you know, because I wasn't there at that time. Maybe people just had all kinds of ridiculous shit. Like I remember hearing about how during William Shakespeare's days, most of the popular plays was just like people like, 
killing farm animals on stage or I, I don't know, just like some crazy, some crazy shit that was going on, you know? So, uh, so I don't know. I really don't know. Like when it comes to, was there a time back then during Gustav Klimt's time where the average person was more educated, was more, you know, I'm not talking about like the farmer peasant and stuff, just like the average city dweller, were they much more educated and informed and gentleman, gentlemanly or, or gentlewomanly or whatever you want to say? Or is this just like a big fat illusion that trad people say to each other to fondly reminisce over a time that they never lived in? Well, what time was he? Sorry. He I, was um, uh, like a early, uh, late, late 19th, late 19th century. 19, yeah. 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 Oh, so like like 1910s, 1890. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Okay. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, like, I know that I don't know how far back this goes, but I know in UK schools, they used to have all these things where you would be taught economics in high school and you would be taught um, current affairs and politics and debating and stuff like in public schools, like normal stuff. None of that is in schools anymore. So I don't hmm. know, like... Um, maybe they were but maybe they i don't know really because because when i hear about stuff like that i think oh man i would have loved that in school that would have set us up like so much better but uh, i don't know maybe it wasn't good i don't know well they they had a different approach to education like than we have like standardized stuff like nowadays that mm. comes from like the prussian school system mm. but I, I don't know i mean lev that's how does this have to do with mental health <laughs> like <laughs> I think it has to do. It has so, to do a lot because if, yeah. if you can't succeed and you're you're an innocent, hardworking artist like me, you know, of course you're going to be crazy. I think like by the nineteenth century, wait, wait, there was. Oh yeah, go, go on. No, like there was just I think more of like a decadence to life that could enable certain. Um, I'm and I know it's like a fair, unfair accusation to accuse the secessionists of this or the impressionists to say that like they were just uh, artists of pleasure because they came from like the largely like pre world war one period in Europe where like France was like the cultural center. Um, I don't know. Like, I think like then what, what came after you had like, hmm. the German expressionists. Yeah. No, but, so but, to tie, but to tie it into, uh, but to tie it into Paul town, when we're talking about somebody like him, like an artist, like would he be able to have been recognized back then alongside a lot of these uh you know these greats like the vienna secessionists and so on oh, and yeah. so forth you, you know what yeah. i mean like versus today where it seems like this art world has been very much uh you know has uh again like with the artist statements and all this all this fluff you know what i mean it just seems like the quality of that environment I just feel is like it's been eroded yeah yeah I don't, I don't know if you guys know. saw. I, 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 sorry, yeah, to, but anyway, I just wanted to mention one thing because I don't. I'm sure you guys must have seen it, but like, have you seen that piece, um, "Take the Money and Run," where somebody um, got commissioned for like eighty four grand to do some paintings, but then just gave Ooh, them blank yeah, canvases so and funny. fucked up. That's so funny. <laughs> I, was, I was like, mate, this is just a testament to how fucked up the art world is now. Because like, if somebody paid me eighty four grand to do a painting, you bet you're damn right you're gonna get a fucking painting. Like. I would feel so humbled to have that, but this guy felt so, so entitled. To do... It's funny in a certain respect, because I like to laugh at the degradation of the art world in a certain way as well. But at the same time, because I did an art degree and stuff and I've-, I've uh... Oh, so yeah, so you're, you're, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like I feel a certain kind of way about it. Like when I, like there's a love-hate relationship going on, you know what I mean? And Yeah, but know... as soon as Rothko did, then no one else can do it. My... As soon as Barnett Mo Newman did the strips and that was it, like that. Mm. As soon <laughs> yeah. as Malevich did the square. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't know. There's certain like hard edge artists like Scully that did something different than like the typical like '70s minimalism. Like that shit got so old by the '80s. But then the '80s had like different fucking god awful pop art that I detest, even though it had mm. like quote unquote artistic skill. Um, I think like could Paul Town be recognized in the 19th century? Yeah, probably. I think mm. like. If you look at certain French estate writers, I don't, don't want to be maybe. compared. I don't know. I'm still young, and, and so I don't want to. It's very presumptuous yeah. to be like. Wait, wait, Paul. Well, I have been how... recognized the long story. I would be exactly like... like Emile Zola back then. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, wait, 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 Paul. I asked this to Max Derrett, so it's only fair that I ask you the same question. How old are you, or how young are you? Oh, I'm old. I'm an old 
old name. No, real I'm old. Uh, real I'm, old. Yeah, I'm real old. Uh, no, I'm 26. I'll be 27 soon. Oh, oh hell yeah. Yeah. And by the way, speaking of art, I wanted to share this. This is still a work in progress. This is my uh, Musk Calls NFT. It's going along really well. This is what it currently looks like right now, oh, but it's still mm. it's still Thanks. a work in progress. That's and what awesome. I'm Thank you. What I'm going to do is like you see all these details here, most of them are actually going to be their own cards. So it's kind of like a collectible NFT card game where you would have like you see like this creature over here, this deer down here let me see if i can get a bigger uh, bigger view of this deer head creature in the uh, chat one second here uh here we go okay so th this guy over here so it's a deer it well it's like a deer skull head That's but it weird. also has a tail with these deer antlers who's looking very suspiciously you drew at his owner yeah i drew yeah this i drew the whole awesome. thing Thank you. I love the shading and like the, the oh, coloring on it. It's yeah, awesome. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. So I like the idea of having these various beings, which have appendages that are also that also have their own life and are distrustful of their owners. You know what I mean? Like there's <laughs> all these different relationship dynamics going on with these creatures, and I'm gonna put him in front of a holographic background, like a Pokemon card or something. And same thing for a lot of these, like these blowfish over here on the side. Let's see if I could get a zoom on and another one. Well, these guys, like these are just like small details over here that I'm gonna share. They're very small, but they're also, I think, gonna be like independent creatures. Like this guy over here, the mouse man, I call him Miggy Mouse. So M I G G E E. It's just like this old, disheveled mouse man, you know, who's just like completely dried up, and he's just attempting to climb this pyramid. And there's this friend of his. I don't remember his name, like Elephant something, Elephant Mustache Man, who's just like <laughs> flying around That's like awesome. Dumbo. And oh, by the way, I realize I'm blocking this screen, so nobody even sees this drawing because of my camera. So hold on. Let me turn off the. Let me turn off my own view. <laughs> Peter Scully broke the rules. Nice. <laughs> let me turn off my own view. Hold on one second. There we go. Okay. So now you can see here the mouse man over here, Miggy Mouse, and over here above this is the skull. Uh, I don't remember the name of this guy. It is written down somewhere. And this is like the full thing over here. So this is Muskulls. It's going to be out in to, in time for Halloween and all that. And uh, yeah, so I'm very I'm very excited about uh, releasing more of these NFTs. If you guys want to find and invest in Lev with some of these NFTs, what you have to do is you have to go to levcards.com. This is where you're going to find the uh, links to the NFTs. I have them on Super Rare. I have them on Known Origin. And you could also go to just superrare.com slash Polyakov. Here we go. Yes, feel, well, here we go. Okay. Well, someone they're saying in the chat that Paul Town is a fed. I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, he, he was talked to that's by. That's actually true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder, like, if like the whole like thing around like certain, I would say like right wing spaces, um, around like um, the Fed discourse. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that produces like this weird. Well, it's schizophrenopticon. It's, it's good. To that's like the funniest thing for me. It's like somebody who's actually has like schizophrenia. Like when I see people like, like obviously like showing like paranoid delusions. It's like, mm. it's like, man, you, man, you like, you don't even have schizophrenia and you've like sigh up yourself into being mentally ill. Like what's wrong? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. And maybe I am working with the feds. That's why I said that. But I think it's really <laughs> weird. Like, I think how, like the sort of like edginess that comes with being like a right wing ship poster nowadays I'm oh, yeah, not even right wing at this point. Like, no, I know it's really. Oh shit! <laughs> the good nights, nightcaps. Um, no, I feel like what I mean is that, like, certain, not even necessarily right wing, but I think like dissident spaces. Yeah. I think like, on the one end, it produces, um, a weird like persecution, gang stalking, like the world is out to get me, because the world mm. is out to get you. But at the same time, well, especially me, they're yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But at the same time, I feel like the answer isn't to like pull a, you know, I quit, I denounce everything. The answer I'm going... is to change your name. Yeah. <laughs> change your hair, dye your hair, cut off all contact with friends and family, get yeah. really, really, really involved in researching like MKUltra. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Go then in take the woods. Psychedelic, smoke weed, 
drink alcohol, especially amphetamines are really good to do. Bum around in like abandoned buildings. Yeah, do that sort of stuff. And and find other people online. Yeah, find other other people online who talk about like mind control and like aliens and and, like little nanobots. Find those communities and really get into those communities. And that's where you're going to find the truth. And you're really going to, it's going to help you mentally. (laughs) No, oh my God. (laughs) <laughs> no, but I, I think like, I don't know, the answer is to, I think like, it is true, we do get caught up in the culture war shit a lot, but the yep. answer shouldn't be like, I'm going to peace out. I think we just have to find like well, a the answer is, healthy relation to the outside than like, I the don't know. The answer is, uh, for me at least, it's like, all right, like, as somebody who's actually had like mental health issues and like delusions, mm. not delusions, because they're kind of true, but like, like thought like thoughts like not paranoid just like very concerned like what if blah blah blah, what happened um i don't really get anxiety so i don't really it's not really paranoid because i don't really get scared about it but um best thing to do is really think of yourself like all right let's just assume this is all true like literally who cares like it doesn't matter like Mm. oh i'm being oh the government's spying on me they're looking through my webcam or they have people parked outside like oh no they're gonna watch me shop oh no the government's gonna see me fall asleep (laughs) at 11 p.m tonight and wake mm-hmm. up you know at 3 a.m or something it's like it's like it doesn't matter like it, who cares like pretend the government the cia is literally spying on you they have mind control devices and that sort of stuff it doesn't matter it yeah does, you gotta like, bring yourself down to earth yeah it's like mm-hmm. it's like okay well, like wow like even if the government's gang stalking me no they're freaking my mind <laughs> they're gonna they know what i ate for lunch it's like Oh no! Like, You're gonna hit me like with a, the laser beams. Okay. Like, <laughs> well, like, but um, yeah, I mean, it's the, uh, answer, yeah, but there's just, the uh, knows I had lunch. Like, I think there, there's that, the uh, uh, there's the lyrics, by the way, from Sonic the Hedgehog uh, or from Sonic Adventure. The song "It Doesn't Matter." It doesn't oh, matter man. now what happens. I will never give up the fight. There yeah. is no way I will run away from all of my frights. Long as the voice inside me says so, I will always keep on running. There is no way to stop me from going to the very top. It doesn't matter who is wrong or who is right. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's like, just do what you're going to do. And then, like, don't worry about um, people spying on you. Or that's, and that's, like, for me, it's, like, like, I have people post my personal information. I have people, you know, go yeah, you've been that sort of, really thing, that sort of thing. I've been doxxed, like, 30 times in the chat tonight. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I keep getting doxxed, which is funny. But um, it's, like, okay all right like who cares like it doesn't matter like like what what are you doing (laughs) like what's wrong with Mm. you you know what i mean um i I want yeah i I want by the way to ask uh, specific questions because again i understand your particular situation right now wouldn't lend you to uh uh elaborating on certain ones but if possible i am curious when it comes to the time before you go to sleep because yeah. one of the things that I have sometimes, let's say I listen to classical music, I would have sometimes classical compositions just start appearing in my mind right before I go to sleep. And mm. if there's a day when I meditate you know, quite a bit and do the breathing technique, I would have very commonly just like these images pop up that would pop up for like half a second. Like mm. I, I barely pay attention to them and I instantly forget them. And it's interesting that when i do the meditation itself it almost feels like i and i do remember certain things when i do it like i remember things from my childhood but also it feels like i remember something that feels like it's it's older than maybe even me being alive it's something very Mm. familiar it's as if something comes Mm. back to you that's like ultra familiar and you can't put a finger on what exactly it is but yeah. you feel like yeah this is like i've been here before i know i, I know what this is so i'm curious if you've ever had experiences like uh like those yeah i i um yeah like you said there's certain things i, I can't really talk about just because certain situations but um yeah no i've had that sort of thing where you you're laying down you, you start like visualizing like geometric patterns and like light and that sort of thing um no i don't even mean that i mean just like split second images oh yeah like, and then like, i've also like i've complete, also had complete yeah. images yeah i've had like periods where i'll get like it's just like 
it's like almost like you know you're plugging in like a usb stick and like all of a sudden like you transfer over files and it's like it takes like half a second for like a huge file to transfer over or something like that where i've had like you know like images just flash in my head and that sort of thing um like yeah like of like different things and, and that sort of stuff um hmm. but that's uh yeah no there's there's i i would say um the the music thing in particular i haven't really noticed i haven't really done anything related to that but like that was one thing you you talked about with the uh video with um the sonic thing talking about like the the, the energy traveling up and down the spine thing like i definitely noticed that um mm. yeah i'm feeling it right now actually yeah it's uh it's around the uh, middle area there but uh, with the shapes, you mentioned the geometric shapes. Can you say a little bit about that? Like, what exactly are the uh, shapes uh, for you? Yeah, How it's does like that all a, work? almost like a, what's, I forget the right word for it. Like a, like a, a not check, I'm not going to say checkerboard pattern because then people will be like, I'm a Sonic. This is a Sonic thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm-hmm. It's like a, uh, yeah, like a crisscross pattern. Like yeah, like a, like, like a grid. Yeah, like a grid, just like splitting across, mm. splitting from from a, a singular point of light into like a grid of uh, into a grid of light and that sort of stuff, but kind of rounded, more of like a almost like a Celtic sort of uh, pattern, uh, than like just like a, just a flat. Like a grid tunnel. Yeah, kind of like that. Um, is the tunnel moving? Like, is it constantly? I've had like con- weird like things about like with like visions like wormholes and that sort of thing, and like mm. that was like in concert with like me like I'd look at the time and I'd look at the time like ten minutes later and be like twenty minutes earlier than at the time I had originally looked at, oh. and I was like, that's weird. What are the but, most uh, frequent colors that you end up seeing? Oh, to be honest, I don't really visualize much. Uh, it's mostly when I've when I've seen it, it's just white, um, just light. Mm. Um, yeah, just, just no. But, but in general, I mean, when you tur- when you close your eyes, like if you were in a dark room, because obviously, if I close my eyes now, I'd see the color orange because mm-hmm. of the uh, you know, because right. the, like the blood vessels and all that. Mm-hmm. But if you were in a dark room and you would close your eyes, what would you see? Blackness. Blackness. <laughs> see, I never, I never mm-hmm. see blackness anymore. I don't remember the last time I ever saw blackness. Like mm-hmm. it's always now like blue and purple and shit, and just like all these things going on i don't know i don't know i I, I tend to see colors as well like i don't know what that means i i I mean similar stuff like just grid pattern type stuff and whatever Mm. sometimes it actually formulates into full images if i'm like really concentrating on it and like letting do you like meditate stuff i don't know i don't particularly meditate like um like purposefully but Mm. i do spend a lot of time like just thinking things through or just like especially if I'm going to bed, like I will lie there and like think and like, or even not even think sometimes you just like watch the images on the back of my eyelids kind of a thing. Just see yeah. Do happens. you like uh, hear voices that tell you to hurt people? Uh, only Those occasionally. People. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, 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 no not, nothing on that extreme, yeah. but like, uh, I don't either. But yeah. I just, it was funny, a funny question to ask. But yeah, By the no, way, I, yeah, I don't know. I always thought it was normal to see that kind of stuff, but maybe not. I don't know. Here is the uh, here is the example of what it looks like. This is, I think, the uh, best version that I've ever yeah. done as far as like the animation of it. Like mm. what exactly? That's kind of what it looks like. It's like so a side trance music video. <laughs> and you and you see like these little balls over here. Let me try to uh, let me try to play one more time here. Let me see if I could find the right area. Okay, so these balls. Okay, you, you see, like, these little these little balls, right, that are around the star. These balls are the kind of, like, they're the things that end up turning into various shapes. So they would be the balls that would then turn into the shapes that make up the three-dimensional DNA helix. They would be the balls that would start turning into, like, a triangle, where you would have three balls. Or, you know, they would go into a crescent shape, so where you would have more streaks of light streaming downwards, and that creates, like, this moon-like crescent. So when I saw that, it immediately... Oh, I think I was blocking the view. Or maybe not. No, um, you Okay, so I immediately understood that when you look at all of these old pictures of, like, I probably even have some over here in the very beginning of the Sonic thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of like somewhere over here. So when you have these old images uh, from the Sumerian times where they also depict like the winged sun, but they also would depict the uh, crescent underneath that sun. It's like, that's like exactly the shit that I'm seeing. So I don't know what exactly, what exactly this uh, means in the grand scheme of things. I could just be making 
yeah here's like the egyptian wing so you're losing your mind love losing my you're oh, okay. losing it love you're losing it here's you're an example so here's the uh here's the sumerians so you would see like similar similar things similar things happening over here so you have one example of the wing sun and let's say if i press play uh, okay here's another one so yeah here's the third one let's see if i you, you, you get the idea yeah. i'm probably losing my mind i know you're going insane you're having <laughs> no, I don't, you need I, I to be think medicated a... immediately yeah probably <laughs> it's a meme affliction love it's an internet meme affliction yeah yeah can't too much talking with me has just destroyed your mind. <laughs> my feel bucks of my feel bucks have destroyed your yeah. psyche. I think there is like a pattern recognition thing going on here, though, because I think there is like a there is a I don't know what the reason is, but I think there is a reason that like certain shapes and things come out of shit. You know what I mean? Especially when it comes into spirituality and stuff like that. I yeah. think there is some. There's got to be some connection to you know, like you say, meditation, psychedelics, the spiritual side of life and all that kind of stuff. Like, I feel like they're all intertwined in one way or another. I don't know how they actually work, but mm -hmm. I don't know. There's got to be a connection. Like, it just it's well, too, it just happens too often. Like, Well, the theory that I formulated in the Sonic thing is that the human body is a representation of the universe, where not, not the universe as if, uh, you know, like all the planets and shit, but the universe as far as there being some kind of a structure to reality itself, where the human body is a representation of that. By that, I mean, like, you know, you have, like, your classic uh, Kedusha symbol, so that would be, uh, you know, this one that's found, like, in the Staff of Hermes, where you would have the twin snakes going up, and uh, that would get you to, like, when the wings start spreading out. And then you would have, like, the human body. And with the human body, you would have the lower organs, you know, being, like, for sex, procreation, survival, and then you would have, you know, kind of, like, the hierarchy of needs kind of ends up going uh, upwards, where it's, like, the heart, you know, balances everything out, and then, like, the brain thinks of higher concepts, and it's at the top, while the sex parts are in the bottom, you know what I mean? Like, there's something mm -hmm. interesting going on there, just with uh, the way that the body is formulated, and uh, let's see, here is a... Uh, crazy ass schematic of the temple of luxor which i uh included in the sonic thing as well so for anybody who wants to grab that that's going to be in our btr chat speaking of which go to our discord by the way for everybody who's watching this right now if you are not members of our discord yet i hope that this uh stream where we talk about schizophrenia would uh get more people uh interested in getting deep yeah with if, us. You're worried, if you want to like destroy your mental health join discord servers and that'll really help mess with you exactly especially especially ours yeah so mm. yeah if you look yeah. at the look at the 222 online you know what does that mean what yeah, is this that? is the this what is the mental health stream 22 mean to you love <laughs> hmm. so uh i think that we're going to be uh ending it pretty much uh pr pretty soon i wanted to get to some uh final thoughts so uh Final thoughts. Let's start with uh, Average Centrist. Tell us your final thoughts on uh, this uh, discussion and also anything you happen to be working on and, uh, yeah, anything anything else. Um, my final thoughts are, obviously, mental health should be taken seriously, but at the same time, there should be room to wiggle room to have fun and laugh and not take it always so seriously. Uh, I, I appreciate Paul's sense of humor. Like, I think it's... Uh, I don't know, people always come to these conversations like so like rigidly, like almost like a pity party. And I think yeah. that's not always right. Like, pe you know, people are still people, whether they got mental health problems or not. And like, um, I think that, like, I don't know, I feel like this stream highlighted that, you know, we were like, we can just come kind of come together and like, just speak about it like normal people. Um, Even if some of us are freaks. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. G, remember that song, Calling All Freaks Now. What, you know who that is that talking? from? That is, let's see, Freaks Now. I saw it in the commercial one time. That's Crystal Method, name of the game. Oh. Oh. All right. Anyway. Uh. I'm not really working on any, anything, by the way. I'm just a hobby stripper, like YouTuber and stuff. I don't really have any particular, like, work ethic towards it or anything. I just go onto YouTube to vent, really. <laughs> that's about it. No, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been... Uh... It's interesting because I have I'm not really familiar with you, but it was nice. It's nice to talk with you and, and get your perspective on stuff. Yeah, it's been cool, man. Yeah, it's been really cool. And uh, Gio, any final thoughts? Um, I think that 
it's I don't know I don't know because I I just see a lot of this uh, accelerating until we can uh, get total meme forgetting. Uh, I think uh, what people were celebrating the uh, the temporary stalling of Facebook and Instagram. I think that's a positive thing, despite what some people think is like you know we have to remember. It's like no, I think that the old internet, the real schizo posts, we have to archive. And a lot of them have been lost to time, the forums, the Usenet sites. But now I think that we're in a position where uh, we're going to see a total mental health apocalypse with the Zoomers because they don't really know uh, what life was like before. I think that's why, unironically, millennials such as myself are more mentally ill than Zoomers in the sense that because we know what it was like, quote unquote, before the internet grabbed a hold of all life, then uh, we have this like weird nostalgia complex that we can't seem to transcend. Mm. And that always becomes like this weird ontology. And that's why millennials are so uh, fucked. And that's why we destroyed the culture as a whole. And, uh, <laughs> and we deserve everything we get. Uh, real, real old Paul, but... guess, uh, guess how old I am. You're 36. No, <laughs> no, no, 35. That, all, that, that would be pretty interesting if I was. No. Uh, 28. No. 33. Yeah, close. close. 32. Yeah, yeah 32. 32. There you go. 32. That was my first guess, but I didn't want to say it. <laughs> um, no, I, uh, I appreciate that. I'm probably going to be in the sun a lot more soon. So let's see what uh, what's going to happen with uh, my... Uh, yeah, activate your my, pain my, Yeah, my arist aristocratic, uh, aristocratic skin and all that. So l l yeah. let's see. I... Uh, um. Should I say something for the end? Absolutely. Yeah. I was going to call on you, but before that, I just want to say follow Average Centrist on Twitter and follow Gio Penicieri on Twitter. I cannot believe you're not following Gio on Twitter. Uh, and my I know, YouTube channel. Yes, and your YouTube channel, youtube.com slash giantartproductions. Let me link that in right now, right here, right now. And uh, Average Centrist, you also have a YouTube channel as well. I do. So let me uh, bring that up as well. Let me see. See here we go with that uh, with that uh, gal with the um, with the Cheerios on her head. There yeah. we go. <laughs> Excellent. All right, and now uh, for uh, final words. Oh, and also follow me on Twitter, twitter.com/slash levpo l e v p o. Follow me. I'm gonna have a lot of uh, dreams that I've recently uh, I've scheduled my dream tweets, and I am going to uh, and I'm gonna read them out. In fact, before Paul's uh, final thing here, I just want to read uh, one dream that I think of, has gotten overlooked because it's a great one. People don't understand it, but uh, it, it's this one. I'm going to link to it right, right here. So he, here, here's the dream. Okay, so there was this Tim and Eric sketch where it was like this prop for spooning your girlfriend. It was called like the TF uh, Spooner or something like that and um what? this guy over here yeah because it's like this guy over here he was partying at a concert with his girlfriend but unfortunately his hands had to spoon his girlfriend during the concert and he didn't oh, have wow. a spare hand to share uh, the beer with uh, his friend john mayer because that's john mayer over here on the side so then they created this thing called the uh, girlfriend spooner let me see if I can actually find the picture of the Spooner itself. G of Spooner. Uh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Let me just share this picture real quick. Because this is a great invention, just so you guys know. Here, this is the G of Spooner. This is what it looks like. So you have over here these realistic boyfriend hands that she grabs onto. You see that? So she's getting spooned, what? but with fake hands. So that way he has an opportunity to use his real hands to grab beers and like, you know, high five his friend, John Mayer and stuff like that. So anyway, that's the background of the sketch. So if you go over here and look at the dream itself, one of the things that they do in the sketch is like, he's, uh, you know, doing this hand motion with John Mayer. And then the camera just looks at this, this Asian dude over here on the side who just stares directly into the camera. Like he's looking into your soul. So in my dream, the man from the Tim and Eric GF Spooner sketch with John Mayer wanted to be 
uh, on the <laughs> one fast cat Go back to cat that wheel. Love. Hold on, hold on, I will. So he wanted to be on the one fast cat cat wheel. Do you guys know about that cat wheel? You could buy it for your cat. I don't have it for Steve oh. yet, but maybe I will soon. It's like this, like a hamster wheel for a cat. <laughs> so right. yeah, but in the but in the dream, uh, he wanted to be on that thing. So his head was chopped off. His limbs were like turned into hibachi, and his head was placed on roller skates. On the uh, on the cat wheel. I'm sure Carl Jung would have a lot. Uh, not Carl Jung. Yeah. I mean, uh, Freud would Freud, have a lot to say yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah. So follow me on Twitter. I don't get if it. you wanna, <laughs> if you, I, I don't, I don't get it either, man. These are the kind of things that I dream about. So follow me on Twitter. One of those things, more. if you figure it out, you like kill yourself at the end. You're like, <laughs> oh, like I can't, I can't believe I. You know, oh. once you once you decode it, but I don't want to say that because I don't want to get to YouTube to. Yes. Yes. I mean, kiss Our, yourself. You kiss yourself. Yeah, kiss yourself. Real old kiss Paul. Myself. Final, final, final I'm takes. Mart. Final, yeah. final takes for the night. Final takes. Go to bros.paul.town to get my latest novel to realize that you are talking to an insane person. And mm -hmm. I would say if you're interested in schizophrenia and that sort of thing is Halloween's coming up. And what you guys should do is you should mess around with Ouija boards and you should do seances <laughs> and you should burn candles and look into like witchcraft and, and like say demons names and mirrors and stuff and do stuff in like graveyards late at night this month and see what happens and you might get a, a good understanding of schizophrenia um and then you won't even have to watch any streams you'll just understand because yeah. the voices in your head will tell you what, what schizophrenia is all about be like uh be like aj soprano in that uh, yeah, be scene goth. yeah <laughs> well well no that was the other kid but aj soprano he did the ouija board thing yeah. with the uh kids of uh who's that uh the, the the fat actor what's his name geo you know who i'm talking about which one well whose wife died who's uh in the sopranos and his kids were doing a seance with uh, aj bobby 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 Bacala. Yes. yeah and by the way bobby Bacalieri. And Bobby was actually in a sketch of Tim and Eric as well, where he was advertising this product oh, called... Oh, yeah, I think I saw that one. My, yeah, yeah. My, my Eggs. So the idea behind My Eggs is that you take this pill... Because his egg bills, they were going through the roof. You know, so you take this pill <laughs> and uh, your you basically your fecal matter turns into eggs that you hatch uh, in the toilet bowl. <laughs> That was like, yeah, that's like the shit that turns into uh, gold. That's like from the Holy Mountain. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The firmament. Yeah. But you guys should exactly. definitely mess around with Ouija boards and that sort of stuff, especially this month. And, and Don't Lev, do it. As, please that. don't. So does Geo, do. Geo does too. As a base trad cat. And Geo, says you, should, Geo says you should sell your soul. And no. Be a good streamer. By the I way, actually, let me oh, end with uh, the one, the fucking trending thing on Twitter. Listen. A, those numbers are bullshit. It was a fucking poll that they did in France. Two, all those abuses happened right after Vatican II, and they mysteriously stopped in the 80s. I wonder what group of people John Paul II didn't let into the papacy, into the, the seminaries in the 80s. So anyways, I'll leave with Gio, that. Is it true, Gio, is it true that you tell everyone... And all women that talk to you in private to go to the mirror and say Bloody Mary three times. Yeah, yes, they do. <laughs> <Is it true? laughs> um, mm. I yeah, that is yes. Pretty, uh, mm. yeah, yeah. Geo says that everyone should go play with Ouija boards and say Bloody Mary on Halloween. That's his message <laughs> to everybody for mental health. Mm. And what oh, about God. saying uh, saying uh, Biggie Smalls in the mirror three times? If you say that three times, you you just get really good at rapping. And by the way, here we have uh, Thursday, 7, 7 a.m. Everybody, listen. Thursday, 7 a.m., Sticks Hex and Hammer 666, Joel Davis, Libertarianism versus oh Authoritarianism, baby. It is happening. And you see this dragon over here? So this dragon that is on this poster, you see it over here, this beautiful red dragon? Well, guess what? A dragon like this can actually be yours when you become a patron of BTR. This is going to be for $50 tiers. You are going to get a dragon like this. But one thing is you need to be... See, see I got to hide myself here. I'm just going to turn off my video so I don't have to hide myself uh, in the camera. 
here. Hold on. Here. Okay. See this hat so, here? So this um, this beautiful piece, a piece like this can be yours for $50 patronage, but you're going to have to be a patron for a minimum of six months in order for this to be uh, <laughs> worth, uh, worth the price. Same thing for the $20 tier. $20 tier is just going to be like a smaller and simpler version, but it's still going to be great. One of a kind. This is made out of pine and uh, poplar wood. So guys, you want this magnet, not a magnet. It's actually you hang it up. You need this beautiful wooden sculpture in your life. If you are a clanker, if you are part of uh, Styx's group, What's a clanker? you gotta. Ha uh, that's what uh, Styx's fans uh, are called. So oh. uh, yeah, because he clanks his spoon. What the fuck is that? that sounds <laughs> evil. Hold on. <laughs> oh god! Every time I turn this video, it's code for something you call. Yeah, it sounds like a luddite or something. It sounds like some uh, movement mm. from the medieval. The shakers. Oh, I wouldn't be clanking. Yeah, yeah, I'll just. I wouldn't, clanking. I wouldn't be clanking. I wouldn't be clanking, yeah. wouldn't be clanking any spoons of sticks. Busting them cheeks. To clank spoons. So break. There. So break. Break the rules. Uh, break the rules patreon patreon.com slash break the rules go there right now become a patron you know you want this you know you need this so do this right now and also subscribe patreon.com oh no i already said it but i'm gonna say it again why not patreon.com slash break the rules and subscribe to break the rules tv that is our youtube that is what's going on right now what you're probably watching unless you are on twitch or D Live, in which case you're watching something else. I mean, in which case you're watching this there. But go to YouTube if you're there, and go there if you're on YouTube. Also, go to Apple Podcasts, go to Spotify. You can find all the links, Spotify. by the way, to all of this stuff. Exactly. You can find all the links to all of this stuff in the description of every single video. You're going to find the links to all the wonderful people who are on these streams. And yeah, that is all I got to say about yep. that. Thank you guys so much for being here. I really enjoyed this conversation. This was a great one. And I'm everybody, please yes. enjoy the Halloween that's coming. I'm going to enjoy Halloween. You guys have to enjoy Halloween. Halloween is Reddit. I denounce Halloween as bug man. Lev wants Reddit. you to dress up as evil. <laughs> Halloween. Lev wants you to dress up in your fur. I guess if being a, is being a furry mean that Halloween is all year round? Mm, maybe. Maybe. Mm. I'm going to, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's end it. I gotta go eat. I just offended everybody right now. All right, there. I gotta go eat. Too. I offended Halloween appreciators. I offended yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Gio says dress up is the most evil thing you can for Halloween. It, are there bear them. furries? They, they have bear be. suits. Yeah. This whole I think slide, I think right? I think there's even like monkey furries. I oh think. yeah, there, there's gotta be like Siberian shaman like bear suit furries. Mm. All right, guys. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, guys, take, play with take your care. Ouija board. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. Oh.